Why would I assist? It's not blinking anymore, which means you should be connected. That means we're live. <laughs> what? And you're live. We're live. We're live. We're live now. Well, more or less. We'll have to oh <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah, we're live. See, you're on. You're on the screen now. <laughs> Thanks, John. Hi, it's your show. <laughs> Hi, you guys. This is Ginger Cook, and this is acrylic painting Monday, but we're not going to be doing any painting because the art show, <laughs> we're having our enough special troubles. guest, is fun. here to answer questions about acrylic painting, and this is such... We did a show a few times, oh, it's about a couple months ago, and you guys loved it, and we some of you have sent in questions, but if you're part of the live chat and you have a question, be sure to... Put it in capital letters, and uh, we'll try to. We'll try to, but we have a we have a, 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 a we quite have a few. Quite a few questions, and so we're going to get started right away. Some of you may not know that Cinnamon is my daughter, and uh, she is staying at my house. Has been for about six months. Oh, waiting for Oh, it's been six years. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's all, right, look, all right, all right. It's been longer than we planned. <laughs> and, and, but you know, they're they're on uh, they're on to uh, new locations. Um, locations. Soon. That was plural. <laughs> location <laughs> somewhere other than here. You, guys, you get the vibe, right? <laughs> get the vibe. Oh, We're on a cruise, my, and you my. better be gone when we get back. Okay, <laughs> that's it. That, that was it, right? <laughs> okay. Um, would you like to say hello to the audience? Say hi. Hello, audience. <laughs> <laughs> hello, fellow art fans and Sherpettes and. Uh, yeah, what are the gingerettes? Do we have any? I thought that they were the ginger snaps. They, you, you, we tried ginger snaps, but they... Yeah, but we just, you know... <laughs> this probably, because that's ginger, actually a whatever. horror movie, but I didn't want to weigh in on that choice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's a werewolf. And you murderous. Know, anyway, we're glad you're here. And, you know, we hope, you know, our goal, Cinema's goal and my goal has always been the education of art. And, and um, as you know, we're going to talk about her new book, show you her new book that just came out on Amazon. This is huge. It's such a big deal. The to ink get is still wet. Yeah, ink is still wet on this. I'm telling you what. Some of you had a chance to buy it already, but we want to give you... You know, we got some news, and we're going to answer questions, and I want to say hi Let to our mods and yeah. everybody, and welcome. Thank you, and, mods. And we love you guys, wherever Th you are. Thank you, patient people who waited the entire time it took us to it, get live. It, you, don't, you don't even want to know. I mean, we couldn't get two microphones not to have big echoing going, whoo, 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 echo. So we think we're hoping John okay. and John are here, like, plugging things in, unplugging things. Can you hear it? No, I can't. And then I guess John pushed a button, and we were live longer than we thought. Yeah, well, it, you know... It doesn't we, matter. We've been at we, this for 30 minutes, but... Now we're here, so what? Okay. Let's, let's start off with the first question. Yeah. Okay. By Questions. Golly. You guys ask them. Liz would like to know what do you do to overcome? This is always a question. Artist block, aka the painter's equivalent to writer's block. This is for both Ginger and Cinnamon. Take it away, Cinnamon. Oh, I'm I'm first. <laughs> you could be first. I'm um, the guest. So I'm first. She's a guest. She's a So um, it really depends on why you're suffering from artist block. And it can hit for several reasons. Um, if it hits from a, a chronic pain, a health catastrophe, or a tremendous loss, um, sometimes that requires extra care to get back into the creative swing because we all uh, grieve differently and we all heal differently. But you can also just get artist block from you know you kind of get in a malaise or you're not really sure what you want to create or you just kind of get hung not in a huge way but in a minor way right yeah. like the big stuff sometimes that's you know you got to see a doctor you got to go to a therapist there's a lot in your healing process that you've got to stop and honor uh, mourning takes the time that it takes and painting may not be a part of that process and if that happens to you i guess the thing i want to say is know that it will come back when you're ready for it to come back it's not like you will never again be creative it just may not be the right time for you but if it's just a minor block um, just you just can't think of anything um, my favorite thing is to either take up a new creative project entirely that's unrelated to where I'm blocked like some new craft some some new interest like felted beads or <laughs> just something I'm never gonna use in any other way or um, sometimes just getting out and going to museums and different creative spaces and seeing other people's creativity can sometimes almost like spark your engine. Oh yeah, like look like a local art show. <clears throat> oh and, yeah, like a local and, art show. And then sometimes you have to ask yourself, why do I paint? This is key because why do I paint? Because everybody has different reasons. Some I had a good friend and I taught her to paint. This was years ago. Uh, I learned it like forty years ago. And, 
She was older, like in her 60s, which I felt like like one foot in the grave at that point. You know, <laughs> youth being if you do the math, is, yeah, she's well, not doing well now, is she? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, true now. But anyway, um, <laughs> but she loved flowers. And so she painted a big, big pictures of flowers, maybe 20 by 20. And she did 20 of them. And then uh, she said, that's it. And I said, what do you mean that's it? She goes, well, I painted flowers. And I'm, they're in my house. I'm happy now. So she was painting flowers so she could look at them and, and in her house. And that's all she wanted to do. She was just decorating do. her house. So she was just decorating her house. And a lot of times people will look at a, a tutorial, either one of the cinnamons or mine, and say, well, this is, doesn't go in my house. So I don't feel like painting it. Well, okay. So that's one reason. Because eventually you're going to run out of walls. Okay. I mean, you will. You, you're painting all our tutorials. You go through acrylic April. That's 30, 30 paintings. That's why they're small. Month. Yeah. But I'm just saying that eventually you run out of walls or friends you're going to get them to. So then I guess you have to ask your <laughs> friends. Ask, won't take your art anymore. <laughs> that's, so then you have to say, why am I painting? You know, so does it give me joy? Do I get a feeling of real satisfaction? What, can I look at a painting I did, say, the first time, my first painting ever and see where I am in six months and notice the improvement? That's very satisfying, you know? And then the other thing I would say when you're talking about um, artist block is um, besides, besides, sometimes you'll look at, you know, like with sentiments that you're not really inspired, and sometimes you'll look at something and say, well, I hate that kind of like for instance like I don't want to do abstracts or I don't I don't like Van Gogh or I don't like that. So I would say at that point just for that like mental exercise like you know doing sit ups at the gym who really wants to do those but you could do like painting sit ups and sometimes you can take a small eight by ten canvas and paint something that really wasn't on your list of things you wanted to paint but just for the aspect what can I learn from this project that I didn't know about. And sometimes that will inspire you. So you know what I learned here? I could do this and I could take that knowledge and add it to something that I didn't know I knew and then transfer it to that. Another way is to uh, get out of the house. Uh, go see nature. Sometimes when you see a running... Well, Cinnamon and I were looking at videos last night of uh, 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 national parks around the country. And there was some mountain streams and stuff. And Cinnamon goes, oh, man, I would paint that. Or, man, if I was camping there, I'd paint that. Sometimes camping? I don't know what I was talking about if I was camping. <laughs> well, you know. I said it. I just was like an insanity yeah. moment. Like but that. I'm just yeah. saying that those those are some examples. And then like in, for myself, because this is what John and I don't eat if I don't paint and we produce videos, then I never have artist block. I just have to. It's come not up with an something. option. It's not yeah. an option, so I don't indulge it. How's that? Yeah. If, if yeah, if you're if you're paying your bills with a it, um, it, well, it's not an indulge thing. I think that's kind of a harsh framing of it, but it is not optional. Like, um, no matter how hung or uh, stuck we would even be, we have to continually push through. So I think some of our stuff about artist block is really about being kind of a mid-emergent artist and, and getting over that hump. I think the artist block that hits beginners the most is in a painting like stage three of the painting like i think the one that i see among my students and i don't know if you've seen this in your students is they start a painting and they get to a spot and decide that it isn't working and then they stop that painting and then start another painting and then pretty yes. soon they have like 30 not finished oh. paintings around the house oh, well, everybody has those come on everybody <laughs> has those i have those sometimes i have to ask myself when that happens to me i said do you ever intend to finish it at some universe point in the universe did you ever intend to finish this you know, sometimes I'll get through a painting about halfway and decide I don't like it. You have never happened to you. I just, oh, God, I hate this painting. Every tenth painting I hate. I hate it. And then John that means says, I great. hate three paintings in acrylic April real hard. <laughs> and then what's so funny is, is that John will say, if, oh, God, I'm so glad you hate it. Because everybody, when you hate it, everybody will love it. So that's another thing I want to caution you about. Um, don't, don't be... Okay, here's why you might hate it too. This is kind of important is that you've got a vision in your mind. You've got this fairy you're going to paint and she's sitting on a flower and it's a sunset. And you have a fl f fairy on a flower and uh, maybe um, the flowers, I don't know, just wasn't in your mind what happened. But everybody else, oh my gosh, I love that painting. And you're going, yeah, no. And it's still a nice painting. It just wasn't what you had in your mind. So it's hard for you to translate that it's still okay, even though it's ex not exactly what you thought you wanted to do. Good. Yeah, I, I, I found uh, actually through daily painting that the most helpful thing to my growth in art was to finish the painting I hated, that I had to complete paintings 
to get the artistic growth I needed. It was, it, I, I actually, I'm a weird completionist, even if a painting is real old, like I've got one painting and I am, my poor patrons, I, I love them so much. They've really put up with a lot. So I was doing this very large, awesome painting on an ampersand board and then a bunch of stuff happened and uh, it had to be stopped. And uh, then it got all entangled in that rough emotional thing. And so it's been there. But when I unpack that sucker, I'm finishing it. And I'm going to hate everything about it, too, because, like, by now I'll decide I'll have rethought out the whole painting. But I will finish it because that's the biggest growth. I'll, even if I go back later and finish it and solve those challenges. Yeah. And one time for me, Cinema and I, when, you know, some years ago, she was my official photographer when she and I went to Europe. And she and, she and I actually I designed a painting to, together. And it was her photography that made it possible. And and uh, I was painting it, and then I just got over painting it, you know. And then I asked myself that question because it was big; it was like forty-eight by sixty, and I was getting tired of it. And uh, so I went ahead and finished it, and it was one of my best sellers. I had that image of that painting was uh, um, uh, licensed and sold all over the world. I know, and it still puzzles. bugs me. <laughs> you know, and and um, I, but I'm saying it really worked out. Anyway. So, uh, there you go. Yeah, no, but it's crazy because you'll go back and you'll see things that were like all of the lighting or like even the, like you go back and you pull apart and, and, and then it's everywhere. Well, would you do the same painting today? No, but uh, again, sometimes we're our, we're our worst critics, critics because is, as artists, the one thing that will happen that I don't know about other things, but usually the thing that artists that I don't care how old you are or how long you've painted, you should always be getting better. Your, your artwork should improve. So you can't, you go back to something you did five years ago and yeah, you're going to say, oh man, I shouldn't have done that. Well, that's where you were then and this is where you are now and yay. Yay, for yay. sure. And then, and then you'll look back at that art and be like all mad at it. Where I am, I look back at the old art and I'm like, ah, but you know, it, I couldn't be here unless I did. Oh my gosh, but you know what? The worst part is, is it's on YouTube. So I have all these paintings that I are on YouTube. So it's like forever. So not only am I aging on camera, but I have these paintings that are recorded permanently. <laughs> I'm like a very slow version of that person that took a selfie every day. It's been slow, you know. All right. Let's all go right. on what to another question. Got? Moving on. This is a question for Cinnamon. Mm. When did you realize you were artistic, and do you and do any of your children have the ability or interest? Oh, this question. <laughs> so, um, when I was little, we had a condo in Aspen, and my mom had a studio in the basement, and my high chair was in the basement, and I made art when my mom made art, and we did all kinds of things together. And I, I really remember the basement. I remember the snowmobile suits I would lay on to go snowmobiling. I remember everything about it in the high chair, and I I drew this chicken. Oh, I, uh, God, I love chicken. I, I drew this chicken, and Mom just got so excited about it. She was like, it's the best chicken. <laughs> and um, not to out you, but we were Jehovah's Witnesses at the time, so we had to go to church, like, a lot. And um, <laughs> Mom would write a lot of letters, which I don't know that you were supposed to, but she would write a lot of letters, and she had all this gorgeous stationery, and it's just really imprinted on me, Mom writing letters to family well, members. Well, there more emails, so, like, I there wrote was, to yeah, my there, parents in Seattle, and I had to write, and my sister I had to write letters. Yeah, but That's you were good did. about it. Yeah, that's what people did. They wrote okay. letters. But it, okay, so they wrote, she wrote letters, but she wrote a lot of letters, and she always had beautiful stationery. And she had this art sent out to be stationery, which wasn't like go to Kinko's and have it be, it was like a whole thing. Yeah, her chicken, yeah. Yeah, the chicken. And then she got all this chicken, and she would always tell people it was my art, and it was really good. And I, it just created such a sense of value, um, that I felt such a sense of value in, in being seen and... And appreciated for my creativity. I don't know if the chicken was that good at all. I have no idea if the chicken it was, was any good. It was actually very good, you guys. It was a great chicken. But it felt really amazing. And that feeling, I think, kept me making things creatively. And I, um, it, you know, and I don't know that has to be your parents seeing you. But I think sometimes it's a friend noticing that your painting is really good. But there's these moments where we get really seen um as creatives and somebody comes in whose opinion we value obviously as a baby i value your opinion very very much but like we have someone whose opinion we value and they see the artwork and they say something about it and that shine that you feel on your soul becomes that first spark into that and i so i think that art or talent talent is um persistence and determination, uh, adoption of art skills. You've got to train yourself into art skills. And then 
you have a life story that you develop all, all over time, which is, I, I think, why sometimes older artists are um, better than younger artists. They have more to say. They have, they have more perspective in their art. And so sometimes you'll notice that artists really start to bloom late. It's one of the few things that you get that you bloom later in your career than sooner. Yes. You know, not that not that there aren't young artists that are hot, but that's kind of like a flash. But it's that long run where the artists, you know, they have a lot of life story and skill. And as for my kids, um, so my youngest, wow, she's good. Oh, my yeah. gosh, she's good. She, she, she'll sit there and, and I'll be doing some personal art coaching and I'll come along and I'll have her sit next to me and I'll say, okay, so here's here's the tutorial that we had and here's the finding that the student did. What do you think? And she will <laughs> just say everything that needs to be changed about that painting without exception. She, she never misses a beat. Mm -mm. And occasionally she'll catch a perspective issue I missed. Yeah. She just, and her figurative work, she does figures so incredibly well in character work. And her, but her perception 11. is that there were other 11-year-olds. I don't know. I think she saw that Russian girl that does the, <laughs> does the portraits. But she's got it in her head that there's some other 11-year-old that's much, much better than her. And so she's never quite where she thinks. And I keep saying, but you're real, like, you're an 11. Like, I didn't have any of these skills at 11. You know, it, it's just extraordinary. And so she has, um, she's real aptitude and vision. And yeah, she comes and corrects my artwork periodically. I have to kind of be like, hey, I have to be like, mom's not ready for the input yet. <laughs> 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 Let me come out of the show a little bit. Um, Honey is incredibly artistic as she's well. She's the oldest. She's 18. Yeah. So they, um, they are it's just a full expression, though. It's 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 just in everything. It's in clothing. It's in jewelry. It's in painting. It's in her life. Yeah, it's every part of Honey is a live out loud rainbow. Well, actually, it's not rainbow anymore because Marlena Martinez came out with a new album portal, and we threw out all the decor, and we threw out all the stuff, and now we're fairy. But um, but still, it's just the best fairy you've ever seen, and and it's just Honey has that full expression. My son is creative in a sleeper cell kind of way. Like he's oh, that's an interesting analogy, sleeper cell. He's he's uh, just turned 13. He's just 13 and he understands um, spatial relationships in an extraordinary way. And so he can get an engineer ex imaginary vehicles that if you um, animate them, they work and he can see the full picture of how things work together. Right now he's super into microbiology we have we have water bears which are i don't know if you've never seen a water bear you should look it up they're super super cute they're the cutest microbe and apparently his water bear environment is awesome because they all had babies and now we have like many many microbes of water bears. <laughs> in a petri dish by, yeah, by mind now you, they're they're just, just now they're just crowded they're all in a drop of water but there's a lot of them <laughs> And crowded. they're having a wonderful time. Yeah, they're probably all going to commit suicide. Cause they're no, they're super... <laughs> it's not. It's the craziest thing. It's like it's like the universe, but it's small. It's a really world space. And so he he has he has creative vision. It just... he's, he's It's the, different than his sisters. It, it's, yeah, it's different. It's different than his siblings. Like, completely. Completely All right, different. next question. Next question. This is for both of you. What do you guys do with all your paintings? How do you store them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Okay, I'll answer that first. Um, I live in a six-bedroom house, and all the rooms are <laughs> packed down with family members. Isn't that a good thing? But normally, when those guys aren't here, it's packed um, with pictures. We have a we have a room that's for shipping. We have a one guest room, and we have one small bedroom that has shelves, uh, uh, metal shelves, and with tags on all the shelves, and they're all stacked like books on the shelves horizontally and then of course we sell them we also have um I guess vertically. uh you know auctions uh, for about four times a year we have auctions so we auction off some of the art uh, and we have yeah giveaways like for instance uh, uh people that donate to this channel it's if you've done 25 dollars or more in um uh in the quarter uh, for every 25 dollars you have a ticket in to win an original painting i mean we we, we have a, in our newsletter we show you what those are and uh, um, it's like we give it, we have uh, we have we pick three winners. Um, well, that's a good idea. Yeah, so we do that, and um, I also take commissions, and I and I sell art in other ways. So um, also, we're putting artwork on. Um, we take some of the paintings that we have done, and we put them on 
like for instance, the T-shirt I'm wearing is one of my paintings with a little duck, lucky duck, uh, and then luck is on my side. I think is what this T-shirt sells, and those are available in our store. Do so you have the? Um, I got this cruise for free. Uh, I've got it. I've got a whole <laughs> line you can look at our store. It says, uh, "Not to brag, but I got this cruise for free." <laughs> and we wear those. I love on, it. On, we wear those when we cruise, whether we got it or not. I think now. we're sending one of those to my dad. Yeah, those are good, and um, I might just hold up a. I'll hold it up. Yeah, now Simon's going to hold it up here. This is our newest ones that have come out. That's uh, Watson, and that's now available in the store. Can you hold him up a little higher? Yeah, can you see that? There's Watson painting with ginger, and that's Watson. And we've got um, this is my favorite because he's Captain Cook. Ha! Ah, guess why? So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you can now call me the Captain. What do you think? Right, the Captain, Captain Cook. Right. You know, there's not a lot of, you know how there's guys that wear captain hats and go around and ask to be called the captain, that weird version of dude? Yeah. You've run into that dude? Yeah. So or or, or they call like him that. the admiral. They call yeah. him admiral yeah. or captain yeah. and he wears so, a boat hat no matter where he is. You know that guy. Yeah. We all know that guy. You have got to get like a bedazzled boat hat. To Somebody here it. who's creative and can bedazzle things. You grab this. <laughs> One of you will do this and ship it here. A bedazzled boat hat and, and we should call her the admiral. Oh, yeah. The Art Admiral. Art Admiral. Oh, that's not how it's going to be. That's a good thing. I, there we, we like go. It. Yeah, that, the art that would be fun. So if you, if you like those t-shirts or want to see the persons or all the other creative things we've done with the art, um, check out the link to our store right there on the YouTube. Mm -hmm. You can find it. Can now, find speaking it. of new stuff, come on. we got to talk about this book before we go any further. Look, it is a big deal to get anything on Amazon, and a book is huge. And Cinnamon's book is now the number one selling book in art and crafts. Ah. New, new art releases. New art releases. I so need reviews John, if you John's bought it. John's going to move down onto the table yes. here. Oh, wait, now wait. I have to push a button. Can you, can you push a button. Let me try that button. He's going to push a button. Okay. Oh, there we look, go. Here are the two books. Now, the first one that you may have already purchased is this paperback. And um, that was the first one we tried out. And Cinnamon, um, I, honestly, this is like 285 pages, you guys. 244. And they, and they, 244? <laughs> John Little's very familiar. He's been helping us relay So out. what's cool about her art book is that, it, you know, in uh, 20, what was it, 2020? Yes, she, the 2021. And yep. she did, a, some, you know, some of you familiar with Acrylic April, where you paint every day. Well, she, this is the workbook that goes with it. So some people are visual learners. They, they and the audio. They can watch a video and they can hear the artist. But there's other people that really like to read it too. They, all that's good, but they want to read the instructions. And this is for you. You can do that. And also, it, it really kind of marks your place. You can underline it and scribble. And it's Now, the now the other one that just came out, and it, we, it well, should be available tomorrow maybe? Very soon. Very, very soon. soon. <laughs> it's the hard, this is the hardback back. book of that. And the reason is that... the. We, this one has the, uh, well, you can talk about it. Okay, Here, so this has the uh, extra resilient hardback cover, and it has the heavier weight shiny paper. Heavier paper, yep. Yeah. yeah, it's got the heavier gloss paper. So uh, I, I, I found that the colors and everything, when we started this, right, like as we start everything that we do, I love the bubble one, um, the piggy is also one of my favorites. Hello, piggy. <laughs> Focus here. Okay, fire chicken. Okay, so it's actually Phoenix, but many people had feelings about it that year. Um, so we started out uh, going the first year. We were going to write a book, and how hard would that be? And we wrote 2020, and then we were like, oh, my gosh, how do we get this to people? And we looked at Amazon, and we were like, not sure how to get it on Amazon. It was really challenging. And then we talked to publishers, and they sort of were terrible and um, in, in that, I find that they're, uh, a lot of their contracts are very userous uh, to the artist, to the creative. They take a lot. Not that Amazon didn't in the end, but it was problematic. And we weren't going to own the co content and the copyright. And at this point, I have written, and I'm not kidding, five total books completely. There are five total books that are written, also with the help of, uh, you know, our volunteers, because everyone knows the Lord can't spell or organize anything. But it, five of them have been written. And I just don't want to make it seem like I did it all myself. I did not. Yay, team. So um, so it's like we couldn't get it up. And then um, we decided, okay, this year we're going to get 2023. We wrote it really early and we were going to get it out. And and we talked to somebody that works with Amazon. And they were like, oh, you can get it right up there. 
and um, it'll be no problem. So I announce it in every single video, the school and my book, like it's already happened because they said it will already happen. And then we get there and it's not happening and it's not happening. It's not happening. And we're like, are these like, is this even real? And then I panic and John's like, well, I'll try to figure out how to put it up online. And what we learned is, um, oh gosh, that's hard. The more pictures you have, the longer the thing is, but especially the more pictures you have and more fonts that you have and more information you have, the harder it gets. So we did this first one because this in its output price tag was like, whoa, we need to see like what it would look like and all of that. So we did this one because it seemed like, okay, at least it's going to be global. Everybody can have one. We've got this one the, the furthest The, the price is really, the price was a price point. You know, that it made a big deal for the price point when she was looking at the price point. Because, yeah. And, and you because know, I, you, they I don't wanna... send you sample paper. You just have to guess. They you said, have to guess. You had a choice. I of... didn't know. And so we didn't want to commit everybody to the hardback. So we saw this. And John Little helped us get this laid out because he's done this before. And I got to tell you, you got to buy barcodes. And oh, my gosh, this is not an easy <laughs> process. 2023 is, is close. It's coming. We're, I don't know if it'll be done like <laughs> two thirds through, but it will be out there. So the book is really cool though, because it goes through, I'll go over the, the hardback. It has um, a ton of information. We go over uh, what daily painting is, right? Like why you'd even do it. Why would you even do it? And there's the whole gallery of all the projects. This is from 2020. All these videos and resources are on the website. Yeah, so you so, could read the book and then watch the video. And then, yeah. so again, some people really, that helps to be able to read it, see the instructions. And you can take a, well, for instance, if you buy the, the, the uh, less expensive, you know, uh, paperback version, you can take a highlighter and high, you know, and, not and, gonna, and, and paint in it. If you wanted to do, I, at, at, at this time, I got real excited about doing these programs and we did worksheets because <laughs> that's what you guys needed was extra work during the daily painting. But we had a color mixing exercise, which was really good and a value exercise, which was really good. And those are in here. And I don't think you would feel too bad to even paint in here. And the traceables are in here, which they're also on our website. So you don't have to rip and them out of the book. Amazon discount. This normally sells for thirty dollars, and because she's number one, right? Because I said, "How did it just now? It's twenty dollars," and uh, I couldn't believe it. It was discounted uh, twenty nine percent, and Amazon did that on their end. They didn't rob they cinnamon. They didn't penalize to, me. They didn't penalize cinnamon. But uh, well, I got to tell you, it felt like they were penalizing me up front. <laughs> there, uh, Jeff Bezos is definitely building rockets off the money he takes from authors and people on his platform. <laughs> You know, if you ever see Jeff Bezos go down, they're like, crazy purple head woman attacks billionaire Jeff Bezos. You'll know what happened. It was this. This is what happened. They'll be like, oh, Sherpa got mad about the paper. So, <laughs> so the book covers like everything from how to set up a daily painting, how to talk to your family about it, myths that you might have, things that people think are true about painting that aren't true. It goes through every type of brush. <laughs> Every type of filament explains acrylic paint at nauseum. I mean, it, this the actually beginning of it could have been its own book. I it think so. It explains tertiary colors and tints, tones, and shades. It explains all the colors and why I picked them. You'll learn a lot about Naples yellow, tight-knit yellow. Plus, there's 30 step-by-step -step paintings. In the and book. there's 30 step-by-step -step paintings, and they're not like a small amount of step-by-step -step paintings. And it's got illustrations, explains every type of brush. Like, so if you're... Because I teach the way that I teach, I had this sort of anxiety attack and I was like, well, let's assume they know nothing. What do they have to know? Well, they have to know all the things, which is why it's 244 pages because on top of the lessons. Um, and the reason we don't have the free mini books out is that we're getting conflicting information about how much of the book you can, are allowed to release for free. And we're, uh, but if you need it, if you're having uh, financial difficulties or you're going through something right now in life, if you write us at support at theartsherpa.com, um, We'll try to do something. I don't know what we can do, but we will try to work something out. Maybe a digital copy or a, something like on a drive. I don't know. <laughs> but we will try to help while but we I get mean, that worked out. Honestly, $20 is is, is a steal right And I'm now. hoping they'll put the hardback And, then, and the hardback, is how, and how much is the hardback going to be? Um, I right. don't know. I think John said. I don't know for sure yet. I don't know for we, sure yet. We don't yet know either. because we have, to, you know, he has an idea. Just a They're proud of it, though. I'm going to tell you, it's not I'm proud of it. <laughs> They're proud of it. Um, I don't have the things that where they're supposed to like shoot it up if it's good popular. So I guess it shoots it down when it gets popular. If you bought it though, here's what you could do to help me if you purchased it. If you could uh, leave a review 
Uh, and an honest one. You don't have to, to say what you honestly felt. And then also, if you've done this particular Acrylic April, if you could share pictures of the program, like if you've done all 30. Um, you have a picture of your wall. You could show it in, in for the For people who don't know who I am, who are like, why is this book popular? Why would anybody buy this? You could be like, because me, because I'm awesome, because I can say it all day. But of course I would say it. But when you guys say it, then they know I'm, and, I'm and, telling the truth. And you know on Amazon, you know, where you could, you know, buy a hardback, you know, buy a book, a Kindle or a hardback book or whatever, and then you could look at the author and they got this neat little bio. She hadn't done that yet. I haven't done that. <laughs> she she doesn't have that yet. So you, we, she, you're going to help her out, you guys. Well, you know, I'm just, there's a, there's a few things happening in my life right now, and it's gotten a little, we opened a store. And oh, we come on. Wine, 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 wine. Oh, then, grab one of those books. I want to gra grab one of those brushes. I want to, uh, that's a question that's coming up. One of the, one of the deep brushes. And there's a other kind. All right. The question has come up. Uh, John's going to go back down to the, the table. The question has come up. We're going to answer another question here. These are the Raphael uh, the brushes. <laughs> the brush. the, the they brushes. They now call that at Raphael. Because of the brush. The brush. This is the brush. They're, they're deep brush. And you'll see, you'll, and you watch me use them in some videos. And then Cinnamon uses them. We'll all use them a little bit differently. But this is a kind of brushes. You know how sometimes you just brushes wear out, and then you're all kind of sad about it because you got to buy again. These these are really tough. They're not going to wear out, even if you go scrubby, scrubby. What do you use them for? You oh, watch I, her videos I, I like them. I actually use them a little bit differently. So what's particularly relevant about these brushes is they have a crisp, flat edge here that is almost exactly like a filbert. But then there's a gradated curve, and there's a flagging and diffusing on the curve on both the synthetic. And of course, on the hog bristles. So what you get from that is is soft blending. So one could put in a crisp line and then come in and diffuse the blending, and it allows you to work different sides of the brushes. If you tap, especially on this one, if you like kind of tap in or anything, it creates really nice bush texture. Um, they do really good clouds. It's just a nice new shape, and it's fairly robust. Uh, this particular company is several hundred years old, and they you can't even like a lot of these factories like a skoda and this you can't even tour them to apprentice and even be allowed to touch a thing part of the brush is 30 years they've got like one school for this and there's these masters and they're like the last of their kind in europe so you know you look at companies like Raphael heritage companies or a skoda or any of that this is these people have been making brushes for every famous artist that you like like that's the people that they're reporting to so you know, the ferrules are superseded, uh, the weighting of the brush, the what counterbalance. What is superseded? The, What's the superseded? Superseded. What's that? Tell us what okay, a superseded so, ferrule is. That's about, you got, we got, probably have some junky brush around here you could show well, opposed to that, right? So there's a double crimp here, and this crimp here with the, the half D brush, the way that these are gathered and glued in, and they use a they use a glue that's legal but also resilient, and then also here... And this seal is tight enough where you don't. Can you zoom in, John? No. Where you don't get a lot of water. No, it's a snug seal to the brush. So, and then the the kind of brush nickel there. But really, what's important in your brush is the seal. And so, when you have a good seal and the lacquer goes to the edge there, and you have a good resilient glue, the result of that is um, the ferrule doesn't become loose and shaky. Not that you can't crazy glue that stuff back in, but I mean, honestly, it's super frustrating now. These are a little bit better than other hog bristle brushes, but you still have to wash them vigorously before your first use to make sure you get any shedding out because that's just the nature of any hog bristle brush. Anywhere you have to vigorously wash it before use. Um, and because the company has pride in the brush, um, if you have a problem, much like Golden or Senele, if you write them and say, hey, this has made me unhappy in some kind of way, they stand behind that product because it's like a matter of pride with them. It's like, it's not a small thing in their mind. I'm sitting there where looking can, up where, and talking where, to the where, camera. Where, 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 where do they get those, John? Well, Simon? right now, they uh, seem to be out of stock. Not all of them. Well, it seems like uh, the Sherpa bought everything in Europe was uh, shipped out. That's what? what um, do not know how soon the D brushes will be back in stock. You guys bought all the first shipment from Europe. Oh, that must be one of our team. Who is that? Is that Donna? Donna Cox. Oh yeah, Donna actually knows things. Donna knows things. Other <laughs> well, people, can, it's just a rumor, but Donna list. actually knows. Okay, so but we get priority on them. So if you, oh yeah, yeah, she does, and the, and also I want to mention that you could also just email us, and we, you know, we can let you know when they're back in stock. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, keep and th and they'll keep track of that. And so if uh, I think last week, if you watched me do the uh, the video on the um, 
on the little farmhouse there, European farmhouse. I did the clouds with one of those brushes, if you they're, guys remember. They're, they're really fun. Yeah, they're great. They're great They're kind of like my dome brushes that I'm so hot for, but they have a nice edge. So they just give you yeah, a couple like, grab, grab one of those round ones right there. Yeah, one of those. See? Now, you know, um, this is what you we you know often I've, you normally see me use, and I like those others just a little bit better. Yeah. Than this, I mean, I still I still use this for some things and for blending. I think it's because it has that filbert edge. If you look at that, you can push the edge of a cloud out, and you can still work that corner. I think yeah. that's why. And then you can come in, and you can also do this really extra soft, and you can also soften the bottom of the cloud. Yeah. As we imagine painting it, we're such goofs, and we're looking down. <laughs> We're such goofs. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Well, I mean, we want That's to... why we like them and we like Raphael, you know. And they're not the only good company. They're just a good company. Yeah. That's there are other good they're... companies. I just really like them. There's going to only so many, you know, it could never have too many Some brushes. companies really suck, though. That's <laughs> true. Okay, All another right. question. Well, I'm not allowed to say anything for, about that. For both of you, this is from Jules. Mm -hmm. When dealing with art supplies and the disposal of toxic, toxic paint water, what is the best practices, especially when traveling? Um, you can actually create a crash solids kit uh, when you're traveling, and so that's a great way to do that. Um, also, what's that? A crash solids kit is a chemical kit. It's actually it's, it's inert, but it separates the plastic and the pigment from the water. So all you're pouring down the sink is the water, and then you allow the plastic to dry, at the acrylic paint to dry, and then you can throw that out. And at least the the cadmium and all that is bound in the plastic. It doesn't leach. They did a big test on that. Well, where do you get those? I've never heard of those. Um, so if you go to Golden Artist Colors, they make a kit uh, that you can buy, but they also have a DIY version of it that you can do yourself from your garden store. That's and, what I did. Yeah, and you and you can do that yourself. But the other thing that Mark Golden said, who's the creator, uh, who's the son of the guy that invented acrylic paint, what he wanted artists to do right to minimize their uh, impact with acrylic paint was to wipe off on the towel right on your paint towel before going into the paint water and to have one bucket that you allowed to get as dirty as it was going to get and a second bucket of clean water that wet your brush so you always had dirty and then clean because you know how sometimes it builds up and so that's the thing he wanted us to use a couple buckets of water um, before that, so that was his other just sort of general thing. If you could wipe off the excess paint, if you allow the acrylic paint to dry, well, yeah, there's a towel, <laughs> paint towel. <laughs> um, and then the other thing is if you can allow your acrylic to dry completely before disposing of it, it helps. Um, I talked at, was just at NAMTA, the North American Materials Trade Show, mm -hmm. and talked to a bunch of people in the art industry. Do, do we need to think about these things? Um, yeah, we do going forward. We need to um, think about these things, but here's the truth about it. Artists will probably think about these things. We will organically, as a community, probably be like, yeah, I don't want to dump it down the water. I like fish. And we'll probably make life changes, big and small, around that. But we're not the problem. It's the industrial paint company. The cadmium we use is coated um, in a way that industrial paint ca cadmiums are not coated because um, they don't want it to be bioavailable. What do you, what do you mean coated? What are, you, what are you talking about? So the cadmium pigment is highly toxic, as you may know, uh, if you ingest it, um, in its powdered form, in its, in, in its form where you can inhale it. So the paint companies have created a, ca a coating that goes over those particles right? Mm -hmm. That keeps it from absorbing into your body. So even they say you could ingest it. Don't test the theory, <laughs> right? Like it's so sweet that the guy from Gambling Oil said, you could eat a tube of our paint. It's so safe. I'm sure it is. And I appreciate that he made that effort, but no one's going to test that. But it is supposed to, so your pets and you and everyone is more safe. It doesn't get in through your skin and it doesn't create any long-term poisoning. Not that you can't have an allergic reaction to it. Um, the, uh, the other thing that you can do is just also switch to a uh, modern synthetic pigment that does not have any Prop 65 warnings on it. Um, and there are reds now that are vibrant. You can switch to hue if you don't want to deal with cadmium at all. I don't find it as vibrant. And again, we're not, when they went to look in the EU, because they were going to come after all the artists, and they went and did an environmental evaluation at the EU level. So you know they really brought it because they actually look at the environment there because living in small contained interactive spaces, right? Um, they realized it was the batteries and it was the industrial companies that were creating the pollution. And in fact, the artists weren't even a measurable amount of pollution. And also we weren't working with the toxic cadmium. 
And they're probably you're probably putting more from uh, all the pills that you take and that end up in the water after you've had your pain pills and all the other pills that people take and all the stuff that people take on a regular basis just to stay alive. They've been able to track all those chemicals in the water. So yeah, because you pee them you know, out. I, yeah, I, I for one, personally, you know, John and I are. You know, I, I use the, well, you've watched me paint. I mean, I'm wiping on a rag all the time and, yeah. and j j hardly ever use the water. But, you know, I, you know but if you just, put us all together, but I mean, you know, I, I you know, you're not going to clog what clogs your plumbing. The worst thing you can do with clogs your plumbing is that brush that got away from you and went <laughs> down the drain. That one, yeah. that tiny little brush or or maybe yeah. a little sponge, a little tiny sponge went down the drain. That's probably the main thing. But I mean, these are good things to talk about, like as artists, like. Uh, one of the things that you've got to do as an artist, especially as a beginner, right, or as a, a learn-at-home student if you don't have a traditional art education, is read the tube of paint and read the safety information. Um, most pigment is non-toxic uh, and, and perfectly fine. Um, but there are pigments and mediums that do require extra safety and thought. There's an anti-sulfacant, surfacant, that Golden makes uh, for a particular type of abstract art that they don't even like to sell to the public because they get concerned people will use it incorrectly. Um, you know, not everything in your art studio is safe. If you're an oil painter, you know not to eat the lead paint, you know. That, <laughs> but it doesn't mean that you can't paint with oils and then you're not perfectly safe if you respect that it's, you know, lead flake white, then you're aware of it. And good ventilation. Yeah, and well, the ventilation thing is a myth. That's not true. Okay, so the reason you need ventilation in your oil studio is because you're using terrible, terrible thinners, and you should stop and reevaluate your thinner choices. Um, so turpentines are where you have concerns with oils, but if you were to use like lavender spike oil, which is the most glorious smelling thing in the universe, it's like so fantastic. Not better than my perfume, but keep yeah, going. Yeah, it's okay. just terrific. <laughs> you Guess what? All you get is a beautiful smell. There are no VOCs. Those are volatile chemicals, right, that can off-gas into your space. There isn't any. I, I love this off-gas. Don't you love her? Off-gas <laughs> into your space. I mean, I'm telling you, you spend a lot of time reading. It just blows my mind. I love it. All right? I, I, I get into it. I go, what's that? Let's read all the material and data safety sheets and see what everybody has to say and read all the arguments. And my off gas really into my space really, really is more from something I ate, less from the paint. Well, I so, mean, it's a, it can be a danger. Like if you, you know how there's paint pouring? All right, I, this, your audience is different than my audience. My audience hears this all the time. Hey guys, paint pouring is super cool. It's a real valid art form. Don't use torches with it. That's wrong. That is misinformation. It's everywhere and it's super dangerous. When you heat acrylic paint, even if you didn't have cadmium pigment or anything in it, you are instantly off-gassing from maldehyde into the air. But on top of that, were you to have any pigments that have a Prop 65 warning, generally those don't activate till you set stuff on fire, till you heat it. Acrylic paint, and you just ask any fireman what they feel about the burning of plastic. Is burning plastic safe? No! No, it's terribly dangerous. The reason that all the paint pour people, uh, I think it's just started because people were pouring paint and they saw the people who did the uh, resin pours used a torch, completely different product, completely different chemical makeup, completely different safety requirements. And for that, the heating allowed bubbles to come up instead of having to pressurize the uh, resin. But acrylic paint doesn't need any of those things. So heating it just, you know, at, at 120 degrees starts to like really mess with you. We even kind of like tell people not to use the hairdryer. Not because the hairdryer is actually dangerous, but because a lot of times people think a heat gun and a hairdryer are the same thing. And a heat gun is. And sometimes I will over safety simplify just to protect people because I know you paint with your kids and you paint with your pets. And it's not dangerous until you set it on fire. I'm, okay. I'm on a soapbox here, aren't I? Yeah, I got a moving little on. Let's moving on. What other question you got? <laughs> Sorry. Got let's, let's go back. Way up on that soapbox. But, you know, but paint pouring is a valid art form. And right. I love or I love pouring artists and, and I think they're amazing. Okay, yeah. Let me go back to uh, the book for a couple quick couple follow-ups. Will there be a digital version of this book or and or any future books? Or are you going to do Kindles? We haven't figured out how to do the Kindle yet. We'd like to do it. Um, I don't know, John, can you explain why it's so hard to do the Kindle? Because you're helping us with the getting it up and layout. Basically, the book is so complex with all the images in it and the color in it and the layout of it. 
it won't go to a Kindle directly. Okay. We'd have to write a, a whole book just for a Kindle, and that would just be massive. Yeah. So these particular series that she's currently working on, they will not be in a Kindle format. But, the video, but a but bunch the, of them sell. Maybe I'll hire a Kindle expert to build books. Could and be. You, you never know. And, and here's the thing. Remember, you've got the video. Go. You, know, you got the video. You know, and honestly, I gotta, say, I gotta say something about. This oh, you're too. gonna get on your soapbox. I'm gonna get on my soapbox too, because I, <laughs> I met a, 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 a fabulous gal in Florida on a drive to, 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 to Florida one time. A bunch of our viewers came and had had lunch with us over there at, uh, well, wherever that was. Um, remember the restaurant? Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> What was the name of that restaurant? I'm, all right, I digress. <laughs> anyway, stone locked so, on the restaurant. She, I'm just, I'm just. Anyway, so she was explaining to us how, um, because she does everything on her cell phone from watching the videos on oh, her cell yeah. phone, everything that she was driving in her car one day and she started to lose vision. It's just like a, a, a lampshade was our window shade was pulled down, just gray on her eyes, one eye, and just she lost vision and it almost crashed the car. She went to the eye doctor. He said you. You're doing too much on your phone. Um, it's too much eye strain. You can't do that. And she, she was pretty young. She was in her 30s. And um, so her solution was to get a bigger phone. Just cast to your TV. Um, cast it to your te television. Or computer. So computer. a bigger screen. And if you were going to do that with a Kindle anyway, then not, why not just wa watch the video? There you go. <laughs> but I would love, I wish we could. It's just not, it's not feasible. It's but still just, under, still under evaluation. We're already like, we're just like, hey, John Little, can you help us figure out this barcode thing? And then we just sucked up his whole life. And he's like so ready to be on a cruise. He's like, I have got to go. It's been nice knowing you. Blah, 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 bye. <laughs> Speaking ah. of cruises, our first, um, John, if you want to go down to the table again, our next week we'll be having a premiere. Because John and I will be uh, out of, you know, we'll be, just, you know, starting we'll our gone. adventure. We'll be gone. So, um, so go watch it. Never so skip we, premieres. This will be the new premiere. This is what we're going to be painting next week is a little girl with a rainbow on YouTube. A premiere. We'll, we'll try to join you if we can on the, and make sure we have internet. We'll be there to uh, answering the live chat, you know, when it premieres. That's what a premiere is, right? You guys know that. And that is, you know, we that's on a little 8 by 10 um, canvas. So this might be fun to do, something totally different, right, you guys? Isn't that beautiful? So oh, perfect for kids' room. Yeah, every once in a while, you know, you know what the incentive for some of this stuff is. That some of our, so many of our uh, viewers have suddenly uh, got children or gra grandchildren or great grandchildren have shown up. Mm -hmm. And uh, my brother just that. and his this, wife this just had it. This would be a great, uh, great painting for grandchild, especially grandchild that really needs to be seen. You know, this would be fun, large on a mural in somebody's mm -hmm. room. And I'll tell you what, I'll tell you a, a secret to doing this when you watch the video. If you wanted to do this as a mural on a kid's room, what you got to do is you've got to do grids. You know how we do you know, the grid. And then you do so like, for instance, you could say one. How would you do it? Like one inch is one foot or something like that. I actually have that in this book. <laughs> how to grid. How to grid. grid. But I mean to make it to a, to, to a mural. Just scale um, it up. There's actually a gridding tool. So you can take any image in and you put it in and it will grid it for you. It's Grid Tutor. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure you all know where that link is. It's free, and you just put in the uh, ex, uh, you put in the wall dimensions, and it will grid for you. All right. So here, and then you just you know draw what's in every box. Now here's the thing: don't use a pencil. Pencils bleed through. Use chalk. It'll it, you know use chalk if you're worried it's going to smudge. Then just hit it with some varnish or something so the chalk doesn't smudge. Once you're happy with your drawing. Never use a pencil. That's your tip for me. Well, there you go. And, and the gridding. That was a pretty good tip. And I like the idea that when I was uh, young, um, again, I mentioned we were Joe's when it's not something. We were. It was wonderful. I so appreciate that time. Um, but uh, I liked, I was a little bit into Noah and the Ark because, you know. That's all like, the animals, yeah. Right. All the animals, man. That's an easy sell. And uh, so I would take naps, and my mom would mural in the room, and she was painting Noah's Ark and the animals and the rainbow. And every day I would wake up, and there would be more animals there. <laughs> it was just the best. I'm just saying, if you have somebody in your life, and you're and you're using, you know, art as a love language, especially with young kids, seeing waking up from my nap every day, and f seeing the painting come together, it was like magic. It was incredible. And that mural was just, 
um, it really helped me with night terrors and it helped me not be afraid at night and it just made me feel really, really safe. And then I did some for when, when her, when, uh, honey was, was a baby. We did our, our house. We have, we, uh, Cinnamon and I did it together. We muraled all th four walls. And I painted all the little bugs. Yeah, we did all that. And we did that <laughs> together before the baby was born, which was now 18. So, you know, murals are fun. And, you know, here's a little tip if you're doing murals. I like to use regular acrylic paint, but that can be very, very expensive. So I use that for the details. And then we go and you go and get the oops colors from like Home Depot where somebody wanted a light blue or something and it wasn't quite the blue they wanted. So that they discount those paints to nothing. So you can use like regular indoor acrylic paint for skies and clouds and stuff. You know, get white for clouds. And, you know, get all the colors you think you might want on oops, pretty cheap. And then, then you'll find that you don't use that much of your acrylic paint to fill in the details. And I mean, and, and if you really can't do that, what you could do is uh, you can get Ginger Cook and you can pay her about $25,000 and fly her in <laughs> first class and put her in at least a four star hotel. And she'll come in and we can do it for you. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We might both, you might get us both. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. We might get it done. We'll put John on the project too. So, you know, have artists. Brush You're rich we'll and travel. you just got free time and you, you shop from that posh toddler catalog. I don't know. You buy those giant toy have, houses. Have art brush, we'll travel. But yeah. if you if you if you join my mom's art club, you will be able to do it for yourself. So yeah. much cheaper. <laughs> One more question about a book. Will Cinnamon ever do a watercolor book? Yes. Ooh. Yes. And I will be back to the watercolor lessons. I am, guys, man, I am tossed and lost. I don't even know how to Up explain here. it. I'm tossed and lost. <laughs> I'm looking down at the ground. That's how tossed and lost I am. Mom's actually been really trying to just sort of cheer me up and see me and keep me going. Um, it is so incredibly generous, Mom, letting us be here and, you know, sharing the space with us. But... I, I don't know about you, like, I, I don't I don't know where my art materials, like, I do know where my art materials are, they're, they're organized, but, like, I'm missing, like, two-thirds of them, and, and you know, everything is just a well, weird... Most of your stuff is in storage. Yeah, Cinnamon, and... Cinnamon thought that, you know, she would be at their final destination within a month or two, and then four months, and then five months, and then six months, and now, now we're getting into the point where they, for sure, by May 15th, that they would be, you know, be able to start their life somewhere, and, and there have been enough delays where... Um, That's not real. So now um, it's just become really, really stressful. And, and, and I, I got a hand. Having to, to do it. acrylic April here was like, and again, you, I couldn't have done it without you, but it was still hard. Yeah, she did acrylic April, and then you know, so she's been, so you know, this has been, it's been tough for everybody. But I'll tell you what, um, uh, you know, that when she gets her studio set up again, just the way she wants it. And, and, you know, uh, and doesn't feel like, you know, we work around each other's schedule. It's been, you know, somebody can be, I'll, I'll do personal art coaching till noon and then she'll, nobody makes any noise and then she'll, she can, you know, do, do a live show and then we'll be up working and, you know, we're, we're sharing the space and we certainly don't And there are children and, in this house and I don't know if you've noticed, these kids are noisy and disruptive. I can't yeah. believe that. Yeah, They're super noisy and I, super. They want a lot of attention. This is something I've noticed. That they, 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 <laughs> they do. <laughs> they want to be fed they too. Hop in. Yeah, fed, they want food and all that stuff. Seen, so, hug, so anyway, kiss. not not to put too much, but you guys. We um, are kidding. We like the kids. Yeah, we love the kids, but I'm just saying that you know, Sarah needs to take a breath before she starts more. Oh, projects. and you know what has been a shock to me is how hard a young adult is. I thought I thought. 14 was going to be hard and 15 was... I, I, you know how you go through as a parent and you have the oldest one because you don't know anything until the oldest one does it to you? So, you know, you think three is going to be hard. And then, you know, you're like, oh, you know, the tweens are going to be hard. And, oh, puberty is going to be hard. And what I have learned is young adult <laughs> is its own special level of yep. challenge. Well, uh, moving on to art questions and leaving that. Yeah, well, we, we, we have kind of, of a follow-up here from uh, Sherry. After you get to Ireland, do you have a prediction as to how long it will be before you start broadcasting and what the time of the day will be for us Same in the U.S.? Same time for you guys, 5 o'clock for me. A.M. or P.M.? That's I, will be, I will be 5 p.m. and yeah. then it's 1, 1 Eastern Yell's time. I believe Eastern, she's she's going to keep the time. I'll keep your time. I will just, I will, and I will do more premieres. I'll do, we'll still do lives. I'll do more premieres. And then I'm going to have mom come and visit me in Ireland. And you get to, we'll do this show there. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. And, and yeah, and, and John will have shipped his whole YouTube studio, but what she's using now, not everything, but I would, will, will be shipped with them. It, it'll be, they'll, they'll pay for the extra baggage to have it all come with them. Yeah, it's actually so that, going on the plane. 
it's going on the plane with them so that so John doesn't as trust soon as they can, the cameras. As, as soon as they either. can plug stuff in she might be able to we we can't wait right to see what she does but uh, you know that kind of stuff so what do you got another question John uh, of course I do um, Cinnamon, my husband and I recently completed your watercolor lessons, the 30 technique one. What brand of washi, wishy tape do you normally use for this, as even the artist tape is constantly peeling up? Recollections. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> recollections. I use recollections because it's the one Michaels puts on sale a lot. I don't know if you noticed this, but they have like this seasonal sort of washi tape thing. And, um, and so the recollections collections, when they, when they change seasons, like when it's off season, it all just goes on sale. And that's what I use. The other thing that I do is I, uh, tap, sometimes I will tap the washi tape or my tape on jeans or like a, like a corduroy sofa, like on a lint, pick up just a little lint can sometimes help with that over sticking. Yeah. And then here's a, here's a tip for, uh, if you're shopping at, um, uh, um, uh, Michael's um, if you're a senior regardless of what they have on sale they still give you the senior discount but you got to ask they don't offer and it they don't offer they don't just automatically give it to you because they don't want to insult old people right <laughs> so you could just say and you could just say I'm not telling anybody to cheat or nothing because you know I certainly am a senior but I'm just saying that you could just say I'm a senior I, I'd like a senior discount please mm-hmm yeah, that's all you have to say. Because I'd like to go to the moon and I'd like a million dollars. So you're saying it in the spirit of that, you know? I'd like and a senior then, discount. I would like a million dollars. I don't want to go to the moon. Really? I, I actually don't want to go to the moon. I lied. But um, uh, anyway, that's what <laughs> you But a million, say. we're up for if any of you would like to give us a million. We're open to that. Moon yeah. trips, no. Thank you, Yes, Jeff. yes, yes. Okay, Deborah is asking, Ginger, why is it harder to paint a picture the second time? It's actually, Deborah, it's easier the second time. That's what I was going to say. It's, it's easier the second time. In fact, there, there, I remember years ago, there was a very famous artist that did watercolors, and she felt your best painting would be if you did it 10 times. She says, by the 10th time, you no longer give a rip, and you'll just do it, and you'll have something really pretty marvelous. I have not got past three. I, I really, 10 times for me would just be, uh, I don't know. You, you'd kind of lost, I'd have lost interest, but I can understand the principle behind it, but for sure, second time is, is, for instance, my videos where I've had a chance to paint it before a little quicker, and I, honestly, for instance, let me give you an example. I did a painting recently for our, um, for our academy, or, um, is that the academy? No, it's for YouTube, and it's, it, it's coming up, and you, if you want to see it, we have got all our premieres um, listed. listed, so you can see what all the Go paintings are coming up. notify me on every one. That's the number one thing you can do to help mom is if you go through after the show, or even now, the, you got to chat and come back in, and you go through and you hit every single premiere, go to the trouble of hitting notify me, notify me, notify me, notify me, notify me. That'll make YouTube think that she's popular, and it's just short. Everyone, everyone everywhere, because clearly something's happening. Everybody <laughs> said notify. Yes, yeah. Notify, 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 notify. Thank you. And yeah. also, it will notify you. <laughs> yes. Well, anyway, so there's this one painting I've done, and they're giant, beautiful California poppies. You know those orange oh, ones? Oh, I love that one. Great so painting. I had this brilliant idea, and I'm going all through the video, and I, I think I'm so clever, and I'm doing all this stuff, and then at the about halfway through, I'm going, oh, crap, this doesn't work at all. Shit. Wow. No, you I didn't did, say that, though. Well, I, did, I didn't really swear, but I'll just, just between you and me, I did. I, at least in my head, I did. I, <laughs> if it doesn't monetize, it doesn't demonetize you, you haven't sweared. Mm -hmm. it only, it's only swear if it demonetizes you. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so what, um, uh, it, had I have done that, first then you would have never seen the mistake but i left it in there we could have edited it out because it was a premiere but we left it in there with a caveat at the beginning to watch our way through because just to understand that when it looks like the whole painting is ready to be tossed into the trash it can be saved yay all right go all it. right next kinsey what is the what is different about your personal styles and can you explain them ginger between you and me i think Oh, now, please. wait, I, let me continue. Cinnamon, how did you find your own style of art with your mom's strong influence? Enjoy your new adventure and take pictures of your travels, even in the airport, LOL. Oh, we do that. That's us. Okay, so the, for, for me, the personal style developed over time. And by the time I was developing a personal style, Cinnamon was no longer 
living with me. She was off on her own as an adult, getting her own personal style. She went to art school. She went to college. She had a lot of other influences. Thank you. And and um, and so she so she, she was um, I would say so I'll, I'll let her speak for herself on that. But my influences, I was very lucky in that I had an art agent who was named Akadriana, and everybody on her planet was named Aka something. <laughs> And um, she was a walk-in. Um, yeah, you know what that is? You've got to explain a walk-in. Let them know what a walk-in is because this is, this is special. She was, a, she was a walk-in. In other words, she, she took over the body of another person. She came from another planet, took over this person, and she sold art. And who, who didn't want to be a, a, a mom and a wife and have kids in there or anything anymore. So she left her body and allowed the higher goddess that was Akadriana to come in, <laughs> who remembered these people but had no feelings for them. Yes, yes. So, yeah, better. So, so, and she would, she sold... And and so she really influenced my art and what would sell. She, I remember, uh, she, I just, she, I had a big thing written up. I can't sell pink. Can't, you know? She, we had these. We would buy a Beanie Baby whenever she would declare a color unsellable. My little collection of Beanie Babies in the car. <laughs> can't sell pink. Can't, can't sell she, orange. I, can't, I could stomp on one when I was feeling really frustrated. But anyway, so I would say that I got a sense of not only what sells because I was painting for her every day. Big paintings, 30 by 40, 48 by 60, take, putting them on the stretcher bar, stapling them on, painting, then taking them off the stretcher bar, rolling up in tubes, and shipping them out. And um, anyway, that's um, all of that was an influence. And there's, there's much more in my bio, so I won't go into it. Um, I think for me, I started out with a very commercial style, and I thought I was going to work in the print and card market because um, I was really good at that type of work. And then um, as I got older, I wanted to be in a more traditional art space and I felt like I couldn't get past this commercial look. And um, that's actually why I did my first daily painting was to try to break down um, that, that illustrative commercial feeling and, and have more of a fine art feeling. And boy, does that sure work. <laughs> it really does. It's a journey though. I did it like every day for like almost a year. Yeah, and also when Cinnamon was in art school, she was art and architecture student of the year at Prairie View, at, at Texas A&M in and Prairie View, and she was the um, Hi, Prairie View A&M people. And uh, uh, she took art in, in college. I know, and, unexpected, right? And then she went to art. She went to that design college down in uh, Houston. Also, mm -hmm. you know, she did that. So. And, and so. Um, and in fact, I used to love to take Cinnamon to art galleries because we'd go in and talk to the and. She could get, sometimes when you go into an art gallery, they can be very intimidating, particularly as an artist, you go in there and you look at the paintings and they look like you just, I don't know, crawled out from underneath your car or something, something the way some of these people, you're not all dressed up like them. You know, they, they can make you feel really small It's just that and gallery terrible. girls don't eat. They're just hungry, Mom. Yeah, and I mean, you know what I mean? They're just, <laughs> they're they make you feel really just hungry. terrible. They're anyway, so Cinnamon would start in on the lighting and stuff and, uh, and and she would she just turned it right back. I was, I just love watching her just terrorize those people. Do you remember what you said about the lightning? Like I said, I work on being a good person. <laughs> <laughs> be kind, be good. No, you just you just got a little you just you just gave it back right back to him. Yeah. What else you got, John? Lorraine would like to know from each of you: Has any of you sold a painting and regretted it? She's thinking. Thinking. Yeah. 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 What? Um, person who will not be named um, had a lot of my artwork. Uh, they had purchased it and I had gifted them a lot. And uh, we had a falling out, which I think happens. And when they uh, departed, they left all of it behind like it was trash. That's insulting. Wow. That's, that's insulting. Yeah. Um, and I'm never ever gonna forget it. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you one time. This was years ago. I was at Cinema was just a baby, and I had uh, I did a really cute painting of some cats, and I, it was for my one of my friends that you know uh, for her daughter who was about twelve for her, her room, and they hung in the closet. Mm. That was just it for me, man. That was just. I just, if you get, if I gift an art, it's so rare that I gift a painting anymore. Cause that just, 
I don't know why, man. I still remember how hopping mad I was about that. And we were still friends, but I just never gave them anything again. And the other thing I'm very careful about, too, is a lot of times people have the idea that if you, um, like, for instance, as you're an artist, you know, sometimes, and you, we all want to help. So if the Cancer Society in your neighborhood says, do you have... Or, you know, you have a painting you can give for Cancer Society oh, for an auction? Oh, remember when I donated, I, I, I did that one for the wildlife animal group here in Texas and it ended up in a resale shop. Oh, yeah. And it ended up in Goodwill. Actually, that one's kind of funny to me. But it did. <laughs> this girl, like, begged me for it. Like, like begged and, and, me, and begged me. And, and you discounted it big I discounted time. it for her because she was like, I love these animals and I love this painting and gave me the whole thing why this was the most important thing. It was her first place. And it would just mean everything in the world. And then, like, a year later, somebody's like, look what I found at Goodwill. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. But, you know, so. Um, it's the if, dear if one. You, if you give artwork for a charity, don't expect uh, anything back as far as you're going to be more famous. Or the, oh, or, yeah, it's not exposure. It, it's, not, it's not exposure, and it's not, it's just, if you feel like doing it because that's a nice thing to do, then I'm, I'm always happy to do that. I think that, you but... have to really believe in the charity so the outcome is irrelevant. And maybe that's why I felt okay with it, even though I went to the Goodwill. Like, I was kind of light about it. But a lot of times, I, I did a charity one time, and it came out, Neiman Marcus, and it was some homeless uh, gals uh, that, that, well, they were not homeless. They had girls that had been kidnapped and then rescued. And it was a charity for... So it was unhoused and trafficked. Yeah, and so the charity Unhoused was and to, trafficked. The, the, and so it was a charity... That's a nice combo. It was a charity to help the group that helped these kids. Because we want... I, like, let me know. I'm going to tell you right now. Mom and I are both for women being safe, being housed, and not being trafficked. So, I mean, I went and did that. And um, it was... Uh, let's just say that um, I just wish I... Uh, well, and I got, oh, it wasn't just me. I got the art store to give them a bunch, loan them a bunch of easels, which they sent back in pieces, and they didn't pay for the rental on them like they were supposed to, and they could have been a little little bit... Um, Sometimes the idea of a charity executes I, I, better than the charity Yeah, itself. I would have liked, yeah, I, I, I felt a little used on that whole thing. They so, yeah, been so more these things happen, but uh, so do, do I regret helping the, the cause? No. Uh, no. Next question. Sherry would like to know, this would be for Ginger, as an Orange member, may I purchase any of the lessons offered in the Academy? Off of what? Can she can, She's an Orange member and she wants to purchase any lessons off of the Academy. Yeah, you can't because they're downloadable. In fact, you don't even have to be an Orange member to do it, though I think you have to at least uh, log into the site, which is free. Oh, well, yeah, you have to create and, an and account. Then, and you can, up. in fact, a, a lot of times, you know, we have people like in Australian places with their, the Internet, so iffy that they have to go by downloadables and we were you know because they can't, they can't see the lesson and the nice thing is is that um, John and I are, are starting this and they're uh, a la carte so you can get just yeah, one you just you get one the get thing. the one you want and um, also you can jo join and they're us for big they're like five how much hours is it to, how much is it for a week John you can uh, just 14 join 95 I think 14 95 you can join us for one week and you have access to all of them whatever you can paint in the week or just the one you want to do Mm -hmm. uh, but um, you know, it's like the yeah, absolutely. We 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 we'd love to have you. And now, um, and then we're going to be trying to do something. Uh, we're John and I'll be traveling for the next three months, and we've got premieres for the whole thing. But one of the things I wanted to do was start a collection of of videos, like friends and I, I've got marvelous dog paintings. You know, all kinds of dog paintings. So we thought we'd put a group together and then sell them as a collection of downloadable lessons. That's a good idea. You know, or a collection of still lifes. And so, um, and you know, maybe discount them a little bit. It would be fun. And also remember that any any of our new releases, uh, the first week they're out, we discount the downloadable. So you can find them. And don't your purple them. members get like a lot, a lot? Yeah, purple members get so much. That purple members, be looking for pictures and more blogs from us and video. Man, we're taking you this time. You're stuck. You're, yeah, stuck you're stuck with us, us this and, time. And if we've got any friends in Wales or Scotland that uh, want to get in touch with us, and because we'll be in Wales and Scotland and Ireland and the UK and um, uh, so Norway, Norway and Holland and um, Iceland, so Iceland, so Greenland, you, and and even some places in Canada. Just you, you, 
You want to get together with us? And you're going to be in the EU because uh, you're EU? only bringing in Scotland the and, UK, then and the also, rest of it's the EU. Also, I want to mention real quick before I forget, you know, we've got this art event and when we get back up in Pennsylvania on the 15th of August. And then after that, there will be a meet. For those of you who, I don't know how close it is to being sold out, but... But for those of you, I, I think we're close. Not to give anyone FOMO, but I think I think we are close to sell out. But you know, you, I, there may be still a ticket or two you might want to try. But we, if, regardless, if you're in the area, and um, like if, if if it's just not feasible to do the retreat, because I mean, hey, the economy. Look at the cost of eggs. It's been crazy. We get it. So you can come at the end. It's posted on the event thing. Like, so you just go past all the paid stuff and it says for we'll the meetup. Meetup. Meet up. And then you just come and you just, we try to make your meetup really special too. Like we try to provide food and um, have some creative stuff to do. And you can meet and get pictures and just do a meet. And, and I'll be giving away a painting at the meetup, a, a drawing for painting. So, yeah. Okay. Next question. <clears throat> From Jules. Some of us don't have a lot of funds to help support you and your art channels. What are some of the best ways we can give back to you on a limited budget? Or what can we do to help support you? The number one thing, I think, um, uh, the number one thing uh, is to, um, besides subscribing to the channel, is to share the videos to me. Share them with your friends. Would you say so, Cinnamon? I, I think, actually, even with YouTube, I'm going to ask, because like, uh, if, if you don't have a viral video, it tends to want to suppress you. And one of the things that can help is is if your subscribers return. It's always telling you how many of your subscribers come back. And it's like, oh, people don't like you anymore. They didn't come back. It's a little bit punchy on the dashboard side. I really don't know how to explain to you. It's like that Wii. Remember how the Wii was a little bit punchy? So sometimes the YouTube dashboard is a little accusatory. Um, but if you see a notification come in, if you go and even just put it on in the background so it thinks you showed up, like you don't have to watch every video, but if you could just throw it on for 15 minutes because that's 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 the watch time it thinks is good and if you could grab friends like if you're in our groups and you're like hey i'm going over there to watch the show right now did you guys watch it like helping people watch it especially the content when when like like, like mom's premieres or my premieres but mom's premieres are coming up it's super important for you guys to come to the premiere and be there for it and do a little chat and hit a little uh the little heart uh, thumb it up and leave a comment after because that's those are the things that the algorithm is looking for as it goes oh they were at the chat for 15 minutes and they said a few things and they did some little hearty things and then they left a comment and then you share it oh the algorithm likes that I call that feeding the beast so you gotta feed <laughs> the beast you she gotta knows give all that stuff so you gotta give it to nom noms she's the technical one she knows all that stuff yeah uh, next question uh, from Becky, what are you going to do? This would be for cinnamon. What are you going to do with all your paintings when you move? Drag them with me. Man, this <laughs> is a common, like right now they're in a climate controlled uh, shelter <laughs> so that they don't, uh, so that my art supplies and, and they don't become damaged. It's, there's a lot of them. It's like 3,000 of them. Maybe it's more than 3,000. It's a lot of artwork. Um, John and I have been talking about it. We, uh, we don't know if we're going to ship it to Ireland or uh, relocate it to a uh, babysitter space. <laughs> so we know we're like, watch all the paintings. Um, it, it's, they're kind of, it, they're kind of like tribbles. It's really become a thing. So I've got a bunch of my, a bunch of hers aligning the walls of my kitchen <laughs> cabinets above the cabinets. I've yeah, I get to keep those. Just everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> we got paintings in every room. And John and I are start, look for a new art gallery on our website, the Ginger's Cook Art Gallery, and we will be putting up some paintings, just not at auction, but for sale. Mm -hmm. Just regular we'll, sale. We'll, probably not till we get back, but we'll be building the gallery. Okay. Um, Andrea, for cinnamon. Hmm. Hi, Andrea. I would like to learn about composition. Yes. I love acrylic April 2023, but I don't have a clue how to compose a painting of my own or paint from a reference picture. What are the basics to be aware of and what souls, what souls a beginner starts? What's, uh, not sure on so that word. So this is one of those questions and mom and I talk about this a lot. Because someone is new, sometimes you guys ask a question that on the surface seems so simple. How do I mix that color? How do I turn this photograph into a painting? And and that's a, it, it's a, it does sound simple, doesn't it, Mom? It's, it's a like simple a question. reasonable question that anybody could ask. But 
the thing about that is, is there's a lot of things to learn. None of them are particularly hard to learn. There's just things, like pre prerequisite, prerequisite understanding. Okay. So, you know, design is, is whole such other course. A, it's a whole, it's a whole course. And then composition, it's a whole course and perspective. It's a whole course. So what I'm trying to do, right? Um, I have videos that I have done that have covered this. Mom does videos that cover this. And we try to regularly bring this stuff up. You know, um, what I'll tell you conceptually is there isn't a rule. Sometimes you'll hear people say, it's the rule of thirds. No, that's a made up urban myth. It's a guideline of design that you could use or you could use a different design process. There's a lot of design options to you. What you've got to do as a beginner, the number one thing that you can do is let your cup be empty and pour as much in there as you can. You it, learn to paint it, it will come to you. It, it's going it, to, it, believe it or not, it, and it comes at a different pace for everybody. We all don't hit puberty at the same time, right? comes at a different time for everybody, and you've got to be patient with yourself and understanding with yourself. Um, I'm going to continue doing the uh, Technique Tuesday, and I think I will reboot Big Art Quest, and we will cover elements of design. Um, I try to talk about design in the compositions. I, you know, a lot of times I'll have someone will comment on my channel and be like, well, that's not very good design because it's in the middle and it's symmetrical. Yeah, that was a whole choice. I made that choice, right? And, and they'll say, but my teacher said it always has to be off center. It can be off center. These are, you could do, it's a whole canvas. You can do anything you want in it. Well, there's books, there's books to find design. But for, yeah. for me, what I want to tell you is that painting is a language. Mm -hmm. And what you're learning is I French or English. And so you don't pick up French and say, I want to write a book like Tolstoy now. How do I do that when you, when you can't spell yet? It's it's a but good goal. But those are things you don't know no, you, are you, complex. You, 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 yeah, but I mean, I'm just saying that, you know, for instance, mostly when you're learning a language, if you can get a cup of coffee in that language, you feel like you kind of won, right, when you're first learning. And then maybe you can speak kind of fluently, but that you couldn't discuss. But, you know, the, Heck, the first time I ordered a salad that wasn't Gizzards, I was thrilled. Yeah, exactly. So it's for me, the main thing I tell people is the language. And what you're learning is how to mix colors. And you're learning a little bit about design. One of the reasons we do all the old masters, you see oldie guys, is because you're learning design from seeing what they did. What was it? Because you could, you could, you know, when you go to college, the first thing that they, you know, um, I tell you what, I took design class in college. I remember that first time I went in there. And um, it was just BS. I got to tell you, <laughs> it was BS. That the teacher then wanted us to t get a box and then put some stuff in the box that was pleasant or good design or and he had some sort of, I don't know. Are it was you talking weird. about New, like Bonnie or was it Newman? No, no. This was when I was 18 in college. Oh and my going gosh. to college. And so I went <laughs> and I had to, you, you had to build a box and you had to put something in, some stuff in the box that was the right design. It got no idea what the guy was talking about. So it's so, they had to be in the right position in the box, you know. And I guess I was trying to pay attention to the lectures. I had no idea what the man was talking about. So I went and I put together one of those little, like, Chinese food containers that they used to put fish in. And then um, I built it. I didn't buy it. I built it. And then I made a little wire. And then I made a mobile. And I hung it down in there with three fish. That's thinking lovely. Yes, some point the fish would be in the right position so he couldn't bitch, right? Of course, <laughs> just like I like mobile over there. Yes, you know, I mean, I mean, I, I was, it was kind of this, but uh, <laughs> just, I'm just saying that it's, a, I, I, we have oh, a Oh, I have a good suggestion. You'll like this. So, you know, those, those times when they'll take you through the museum or there's someone who's lecturing on the masters and they're talking to you about why a painting is good. Right. And, and, and there's some YouTube channels about this now, but there's just some great BBC productions. And because here's why, because they'll get into why everyone thinks it's good. And in that lecture, they'll actually explain to you why the artist made these decisions and why they think the design is good and why it's balanced and what was happening. So you don't actually have to go to art school and put fish in a jar to your silly, silly art teacher. You, you can actually watch a lot of these. There was one that you really loved that was on the Masters. Oh, yeah. There's some great... There's a... There's a um, uh, I, at one time, had a collection on, on uh, uh, tape, video, uh, video tape. If you don't have anything, you wouldn't even play it anymore, right? It was all the, you know, all the great paintings, right? 
I'm just saying. So there's that thing. But in every one of our, uh, you know, tutorials in our academy, we will mention some aspect of design. But this is something that you learn as you go. But um, uh, you, you've got to learn to you've got to learn to spell the words first before you write the paragraph. There's just it's just it, but it's okay. It's so doable though. Oh, so absolutely it's doable. It's overwhelming here, but it won't stay overwhelming forever. And and it's like if somebody was like, go do you know this incredibly hard thing and like plug in your computer and get it on the internet and you've never seen technology before it's really overwhelming but like now we're all like ah boom on connected it 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 doesn't stay hard forever and no. as long as you know you're capable and that's what you've got to hold on to that you are capable and it's okay if there's times when that learning process is awkward that's all right yeah and you know, it, absolutely and for instance you may be for fa you may um well, anyway, let's just move on because we could talk. We could we could we do could a whole talk about we could do a whole show day. on that. But just know it's learnable. And we, we could do twenty shows on it. Uh, yeah, on design. We could do a whole okay. thing. We could do um, a whole series together on design. Okay. Uh, now we've created new content. Look at us go. Reasons Ka to make Karen would like to know. I'm touring Ireland with my family the last two weeks in September. Will the Coonies be in Ireland by then? <laughs> Gosh, man! If we are not. If we are not in Ireland by then, I'm going to be... Okay, so here's what happened to Ireland. Um, a war broke out in Ukraine, and it displaced a lot of women and children and families. And so many countries in the EU have been taking refugees, which I think is amazing. Um, Ireland took, I think it's about 100,000 now, uh, families in. And that's just a lot of strain on infrastructure that's a lot of strain on people who do immigration that's just a lot of strain on everyone and, and um, they're Paperwork, being yeah. amazing about it they're being incredible and i think they're doing the right thing that's what you should do when people need you but it does kind of slow everything down and it does make things more complicated and it does strain resources and those things are just real humane things and so i'm actually i know i kind of a lot but i actually do understand and have complete respect for why things yeah. maybe are more complicated right now i don't know when it's going to be uh i am a dogged person i am they're persistent working on it. they're working on it <laughs> they, they, you know uh they hope to be there yeah. when you're there how's that i and if i am i'll do, like i'll do meetups there you go there you go i'll do meetups i'm happy to do a meetup uh jaron would like to know what should you when, oh, sorry, when should you sand and gesso a pre-prime purchase stretch canvas, canvas sheet or panel? Okay, so um, uh, hand me that little canvas right there. It depends where you bought it, how much you paid for it, what's it made out of. You see, see this little, you see this little canvas here? Not until I drop it down. Uh, here, like that. All right. Now this was one. You see, you see how this this is made? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you guys see how this is made? So, like, if you ever had to restretch this, there's all this materials. They're not cut, all right. But sometimes, because of humidity and climate, the um, this will get a little loose. It should be tight when you touch it like this. It should sound like a drum if it sounds like this. You, you might want to spray the back of it. But depending on how rough the tooth is, I, John, and I will very lightly sand the canvas. Very lightly sand the canvas. We don't. Then we will do an underpainting. We don't really reach to gesso it. However, um, we, 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 we haven't done that. Though recently, one of our members in Colorado said that she found, have you heard of this, Cinnamon? She found a great new gesso from Golden that she's loving. That from seems Golden? To, yeah, from Golden. That, was it Golden? I think she said, wasn't it? No, you told me it was a different name. Well, all I right. Uh, Wolf, uh, you know, I don't remember that. <laughs> Golden makes a great gesso. Yeah. Well, anyway, she Holbein felt that, makes the most gesso. And she felt like, um, yeah. Well, there's Holbein and some of those colors. Holbein makes different grit. Which on is a great nice. big large canvas, I would use instead of an underpainting, I would probably use a colored gesso, you know, over it because it, it goes on much easier, and you can put it on with a roller and all that stuff or a big brush. But mostly, ninety nine percent of the time, we don't we don't do it. What about you? Um. So in sanding, the first thing I'm going to say is, anytime you sand artwork, you know those masks that we all bought for COVID. They actually belong in your art studio. <laughs> I had a ton of them when the whole thing hit because I have N95s always. You want to put your little N95 on your face, and that's when you can sand art. You need to make sure that the dust and particulates and art materials are not getting into your lungs. Uh, whether it's cadmium or not, you just don't want art materials in your lungs. So always put your mask on, right? Put your little dusty glasses on so you don't get stuff in your eyes. 
Um, and then when you sand is when you are doing fine detail work and um, if you're doing portraiture, you're doing like lots of little hairs where you're gonna be working out a fine line and the rough surface could interfere with your control or the uh, stability of the line. You would wanna do that. Um, but sometimes it's nice to have a rough canvas because the tooth lets you paint loose and expressively. So it's really about what are you doing and why are you doing it? Yeah, and sometimes your brushes wear out. Now, for instance, the old masters, all right? The old masters, oftentimes when they were doing portraits and stuff like that, um, and very detailed work, used boards. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not just any old board, because you know that uh, materials can bleed through. You know, uh, ampersand, for instance. Makes is the best boards. Best, best boards of any anybody. And anybody. Anybody, they're the best. and. Um, and they're proud of it. And, Jerry, and Jerry's makes a board now that's, that's uh, you know, canvas like that. And also they make a, um, what we call proton canvases. And we like those because they're actually a board that's been um, tr treated and then covered with three coats of gesso and all that stuff. So oftentimes we like the boards for detail work and portraits. We like those better. Yeah. Uh, Diane would like to know, has any particular ODG influenced your art? question for both of you. Ah, well, I, we have to go back to faces here. Oh, yeah. Oh, faces. Sorry. <laughs> I kept looking at you. You guys, your faces were perfect for me. Okay. Question? You go. You're the OG, o, o, well, old dead guy. Yeah, person. I'll tell you what. One of the fun things about doing the old EGs is we take, take you to if, everybody. If you're new here, that means old dead guy. Old or dead gal. Guys, or gals. You or know, gals. These I are guess art, could be artists gals. from the past. It's, you know, 1800s Old dead or before. Persons. You can learn so much from all of this. So I'm telling you what, a lot of people might think that Van Gogh was the influence. Well, he certainly was an influence on using color, but so many of the others are, um, um, I absolutely, in our Wave and Water master class, we use a, a Norwegian artist. That's fabulous. I, I, I would give you his name right now, but I can't think of it. Right? It's Fritz. Fritz. And, um, um, you know, I, I loved a lot of the Impressionists, but I'll tell you what, um, uh, when we do dogs, there's this English artist that just killer dog paintings, absolutely killer dog oh boy, paintings. boy, if you look at his people. Yeah, and then like Martin <laughs> he Head, it. for instance, did some of the best flowers I've ever seen. And what we're talking about, we have a whole thing of flowers from him. So what you learn from the, what you learn from painting with, going back and painting the old EGs that you, you see, color combinations that you might not have seen. You see design concepts. For instance, there's an example of a design tip. Suppose there's a still life that you see that you really, that you like, but you'd like to design your own still life. You know, take take a design that's already been done, like, and see if you got some of the same kind of stuff in your house, and or you could find it at the Goodwill and grab some fruit or whatever he had, and try to set it up at your table, and, and maybe take a couple of photographs and light it and so forth. And you know, you could design your own just following the design that someone else did. There you go. So yes, I think that all of those are influences. So not I, just one. No. I don't, I think that you have influences for a time of life. Like there would be a time of life where I would say the Southwest art movement greatly influenced me. Artists like Bev Doolittle and uh, Pena and R.C. Gorman. I was really inspired by all of these things. Uh, Harrison Begay. Um, but then, you know, maybe later it'd be the Pre-Raphaelites and, you know, you get incredibly inspired by an entire art movement and the people involved and... I think what happens is, uh, and then, you know, man, you fall into the Dadas and, and you're like, I just, oh my goodness, there was like a half minute where everything was Beatrice Wood, the mama Dada, and I was like, <laughs> man, Ray and his sink, and super excited about that. We'd go to a museum, and I would see a piece that, uh, I remember there's one in the museum, and, and it's like a peephole, and they don't make it obvious that you're supposed to go there, and, you, and if you're a certain kind of person, I guess I am that kind of person, you look through the hole. And then it's a really alarming scene and it's, it's wonderful. It's very interactive. And then you get inspired by that. And then, uh, you know, you go to Burning Man and you, and you see incredible work by modern artists and, and, and you see scale and inspiration is sort of just out of this world. And then you go to a gallery and, you know, maybe there's artists and then you, you see someone like Kahindi Wadley and you go, oh my gosh, like look at him revisiting those fantastic masterpieces. And then, you know, you have artist friends. I think that it nev that inspiration is an all the time never ends never ending it's, it's, and that's why you got to get out of the, you got to get out of the studio and look around got to look around and and you know i do think going to art fairs is a good idea and i think going to the museum is a great idea take the tour put the headphones on figure out why anyone cares because sometimes 
you know, when you look at a color field painting, you're like, why is there a big block of red? <laughs> it's okay to feel that way. Totally fine. There's a reason why there's a big block of red. Kind of a cool, fun reason. But, you know, besides the fact that it was a CIA operation, besides that, that was definitely influential. <laughs> but more than that, there were some other reasons why there was a big block of red. And, and it's fun to know about those things. Learn about figure ground reversal, all these crazy things. That, just fun stuff. And um, listen, don't let, Mom was talking about the galleries and the gallery girls and the people who use art language. We talked about this a lot during this Acrylic April because we're doing abstract. Um, Art language is just language. It's just a way to articulate things that you're seeing to each other uh, in a way that you're kind of, you know how like you talk about dance and, and you can talk about dance if you know the language of dance and that way you can talk about something that you've seen and you guys have sort of a common framework of, uh, you know, that. Or like or, people from Louisiana all talking, you don't even know what they're saying. Yeah, okay, yeah, like that. I love Louisiana. Don't unsubscribe. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying that they get down in their own language. I have friends from Louisiana, and they talk with another person, and you catch like every fifth word, right? I'm not. Yeah, no, I'm, there's a strong accent definitely there. Oh, well, they have a geez, slang. Yeah. I'm saying they have a slang, right? Okay, but we yeah, we do have a language, and 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 language is. Uh, I think one of the things that as a species sometimes we forget, especially as we get older, is that language is evolving. Um, and it changes and it adapts. It, it meets the needs of the society that's living in it today. And it, what we say today will be different than what we say tomorrow. And in art, that language is evolving as artists evolve. Um, and all the languages is not to make you feel bad or uneducated or an outsider. Though some people will be such art nerds. They will have a, your wonderful friend who we won't name, who sometimes could be a little lechery mm. and intense with the delivery now it's just passion and here's what i always tell my students and i think this is a great way to frame it do you know star trek of course sure. yeah okay so star trek now there are people who are into star trek like light like oh man i watched the whole series it was super cool i like captain kirk groovy and then there are people like me who like watch star trek like it was a mission for life like these are the models and role models that I'm going to be using for the rest of my life. If Captain Kirk wouldn't do it, I'm not doing it either. You know, kind of a thing. And then, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and then there are people who know, could tell you what nacelle was on the back of the original Enterprise before Kirk and after Kirk and for every edition of it. And they can tell you every fact from D Space Nine to Voyager, right? Like they know. They know. They okay. live and breathe it. They don't mean it. They're not being rude. They're just really into it. And when they meet anyone that has anything in common with what they like, man, they just start going. And you can feel a little, a little bit like, yeah, I mean, I was like into the holodeck, but I don't remember who like designed that holodeck. And they do. Art people can be like that final Trekkie, that final Trekkie who's like deep into it, right? And they're not trying to, they're just trying to talk to you about something that they're super into. They're not trying to make you feel weird. And if they are, they're stupid. You have my permission to ignore them. There you I go. I thought I didn't know I needed it, but good to know, you guys. <laughs> she said we could ignore them. Awesome. You, know, if, you if, didn't if, need my permission. We've been, we've been going on for about a couple hours now. No, so we have not. How long have we been doing this? A buck 30. Buck 30. We're doing great then. Okay. So, all right. What else you got then? Uh, what is the best tip or trick that you have learned from each other that has impacted your art? Ooh. Well, I don't know about best, but my favorite new one, how, <laughs> how about that, right? <laughs> my favorite new one are these Stay Wet palettes. I was forever against these. I mean, like, really against these. And uh, th but these Masterson Stay Wet palettes are like my new buddy. I love these. We travel with them. They're the best. They're the solution for for, for your acrylics not drying out. Um, I've got stacks of these things. We take at least two when we travel. Um, the, I, and Cinnamon gave me the first one. And um, gosh, that was... And, um, I, and I had to be the one to use it to get you to use it. Yeah, because I, yeah, I know she likes it. I, I, I don't want it. And, and um, you know what? Uh, I had to adjust how I painted, but before you know, before I was using, uh, before I was using a uh, a tear off um, uh, a sheet wax paper, wax paper, paper which I I like because you could, you know, pick it up, throw it away. You know what? I can put this. I save so much money with these. I can put paint out, and a month later, still use the same paint. 
that's how good they are. And and um, I'll have one for uh, for my paint and another one for mixing. Sometimes I have a big one. Sometimes I have small ones. They're the best. That that was uh, my favorite tip. You know, in the last few years from cinnamon. Golden what about glazing you? liquid. What? Thought you were going to give me golden glazing liquid. Who was going to give you golden? I liquid? I gave you golden glazing liquid. Yeah, I like where that did you too. think that came from? <laughs> Well, yeah, but I mean, you've done all, cinnamon. Cinnamon. I have so many in my head right now. Cinnamon. You had one. I have so many. Well, no, just we saying, just said one. Cinnamon. Cinnamon is the one that researches the art materials. We don't do anything while he's off talking and, to we, cinnamon you know, first. And she, you know, so if I want to know something, I ask her. She's the one that uh, turned me on to to Holbein paint and luminous rose. I mean, you know, there was nobody else was making a Pepto Bismol color pink before I found Holbein. They're the only ones that I know that do. It's fabulous, not just you know, not just magenta, but luminous rose. So, I mean, there probably a lot many of the art materials that we use, a ton of them we use are because uh, cinnamon uh, recommended them. In fact, we we shop in Cinnamon's new store because she's got the best prices too, online store. We did Just try saying. to do a good job on prices. We did. And we'll have, any stuff for sold out of, we'll get it in soon. Right, John? We'll get it in soon? Yeah, that's what we're going yeah, for. Yeah, it's all going to come back soon. Okay. <laughs> so one of the really cool tips that my mom gave me uh, is to, you know how when you take fluid paint to do fine lining or dotting or any stuff like kind of fussy and long and involved on your canvas? So I would have it like over my palette and I'd be like going bah, nah, nah, nah. and mom was like, uh, you could just put that on your artist knife and hold it close. <laughs> so she would just put hers on the artist knife and then just be like right here. And I was like, rah, rah, rah. And it was so much easier. That's one of my favorite. The other new one that is one of my favorites is the diffuser on the hairdryer. Um, a lot of times if you have a very watery uh, um, technique or watercolor or anything you can't really dry it because it'll make the stuff fly everywhere and it'll mess up your design and she put a diffuser on the hairdryer and that prevents that from happening that was really good Saral paper s-a-r-a-l was like huge because everything else is junk for um, transferring art you know, well, that white's was like, still the best some of the other colors are iffy but white still works uh, white and yellow are really good I think blue and red sometimes can be hard to lift off, but white and yellow are really, really good. And then the other thing we found about, just digress about that, it depends what you're painting it over. It doesn't like all painted surfaces, those, by the way. We don't know why. We don't know why. Maybe you, someone will know. We don't know why. It's just weird. What are you doing? I need to do it now. Okay. Okay. But that, I'm like, there's so many. Uh, your water bucket with the three chambers, that one was really, really good. Um... Uh, tape to get a straight line. Yeah, artist tape. Yeah, I think that's and, the OG tip we, you gave me. Like, the, use some tape, kid. Well, that was <laughs> no, and I got that from when we when Cinema was uh, going to college. I took an art class with her, and uh, because they didn't have enough students, they were going to drop the class. And I go to it was a junior college. And I said I got my friends to go too, so that they wouldn't drop the class, so she could have the art class. And that was the teacher that told me about uh, artist tape, which I'd never heard before, how to get straight lines. Is that yeah. also the one when you went to the gallery and you saw the white painting and it was a stroke of brilliance? Yeah, that was where we went to the, you know, remember we went down to the Manil for a, uh, for a day uh, at, at looking at, at modern art. Was it art. the Manil or is it the Tuamalu Museum? Uh, was the, well, it's called the Manil. Is it called the Manil? Yeah. It was like the Tuamalu Museum. Yeah, to, yeah, it's called the Manil. And there was this big painting of, it was just about 50 by 50 of white paint, a little texture, but basically just white. And she was explaining how brilliant that was, and I said, well, "I wasn't. I was not explaining." No, cinnamon, cinnamon. I no, the teacher hate was, Twombly. Yeah, so the teacher. Well, this wasn't even Twombly. This was just one of the other artists. So, well, no, you know. that was Twombly too. Oh, anyway, so, so the teacher was trying to explain why this was so good, and she says, "Well, it was so great because um, no one ever thought of it." And we both said, "Sure, they did," and they said, "That's dumb," and moved on. <laughs> you know. But anyway, sometimes that's my answer to people. Oh no, I was innovative, and no one ever thought of it. Oh, yes, they did, and they just moved on. All I right, think that's on. great. Hey, can I order from Canada and get them shipped to the U.S.? Order what from Canada? I don't know. Bella well, wants to know, can I order? Okay, my art supplies, no, not yet. The books, yes. No, wait a minute. And so my mom's if she's paintings, in, If yes. she's in Canada, she can't order on your store and ship it to the U.S.? Is what you're saying? Uh, sh she can or ship it to the U.S., but it doesn't ship to Canada. Well, no, that's what she's asking. 
Can I order from Canada and get them shipped to the U.S.? Yeah, anywhere in the U.S. they'll ship. Okay. And we're working on shipping to Canada, but right now they'll ship anywhere in the attached states. That'd like be the... Hawaii and Alaska, not so much, right? Uh, I think Hawaii and Alaska, but I'm not sure. Puerto Rico, I have to check that. Okay. okay. That's not a state yet, by the way. No, it's not a state, but it's part of the contiguous United States. But they are part of the United States. They're just not a connected state. They're, they're, connected states and they're a territory. territory. They're a territory. Right. Yes, okay. But it doesn't necessarily... We have... Uh, Hi, Puerto Rico. You're amazing. And I love the U.S. And thank you for everything you do. Focus, I see people. You. Focus. <laughs> um, what size canvases are best to sell? Hmm. Okay, this is an interesting thing because uh, that's the one thing that Cinnamon and I got from this this artist that uh, we took that class from was that she t explained to us that um, big canvases sell well. And people will buy, people will buy a painting for either three, three things where they're going to pay for art. They're going to Dining room, but first is the living room, maybe two large, like say, maybe say two uh, 30 by 40s or 140 gauge 60 or one whatever, you know, big size. And then the dining room, maybe the, maybe one more room in the house in the entryway. And then after that, they start kitchens, bathrooms and stuff. Maybe the bedroom, they'll pay for a painting to go over the bed or something like that. But uh, b basically, small paintings, not, so, not as... Uh, it just depends. Small paintings will do well at an art show because they can put them in there. Uh, like, for instance, if you go to a fair and you have your art, small paintings are nice because they can just take them with them. But uh, haven't you found that people like okay, large paintings? so this is my thing. You have to have some hero pieces at any show. Uh, no matter how big it is, you've got to have some big pieces. Um, and, and mom's right. They collect well in the house and everything, but generally that's a couple decision. Generally people have to get together and both unanimously agree and then have to measure and make sure it fits. So they're not impulse purchases but they do pull people into your exhibit space whether you're traditionally doing a traditional exhibit or you're doing kind of a craft fair so you want some hero pieces people to pull them in from the crowd and like get them talking to you and then you need impulse paintings that are below the price point that couples don't have to talk to each other like uh i feel like it's a, a like for many couples it's 250 bucks 250 bucks and under they don't got to have a conversation about it over two hundred fifty dollars. I based that on Matt Dom because they have a lot of money. It was his that was his level was like two hundred fifty down. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, we we haven't caught up with inflation. I mean, you could now go out to breakfast. We're not. You get out to breakfast and, and, and spend thirty dollars for breakfast for three people. It might be three fifty, but it's it's what a couple doesn't have to talk to each other about, and it could probably vary for the region that you live. Uh, you know, because uh, there's different costs of living and everything. But there's a price point where couples don't have to talk, and and then small piece they see if it's small. It could go somewhere in the house, but if it's over the sofa, everybody's got to have a meeting on that. Yeah, Financially, and, that, yeah, and, then, it's go, and, and then again, it comes down to design and stuff like that. Like we always tell people that if you're... But you always want like, a for instance, like I want to shout out to my friend Eric, who's been selling a lot in galleries recently and, and so forth, and he's doing very well sell, selling. And I would say that uh, one of the things that never hurts is to visit the local furniture stores and see what people are buying. But and, don't tell the artists you're doing it. But it's a good idea. Well, I mean, I'm just saying it doesn't hurt to understand what's trending because I'm, t I'm telling you, there's a lot of research. Most people spend a lot of time figuring out what would go with that. People, as sad as this is, people <laughs> buy stuff to match the sofa. Except for that one Zillow house by, from Ugly Houses on Zillow. <laughs> that went oh, YouTuber. yeah, we're, we're going to show this. There's this, there's this YouTube artist. Doesn't have any, he's any, not an artist. He's just a YouTuber. Oh, no, he's not, not, not even an artist. He's just a YouTuber. But he's hysterical. He's funny. And Cinnamon and I were watching him last night. Ugly houses. He's, on... he's like under a thousand subscribers. I don't know how we fell into this gem of a channel. Yeah, we got to laughing so hard. And the, 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 the true story, this is so funny. So he's, we had on another channel, we had seen uh, another YouTuber who was showing houses for sale in, in Vermont. And, the, one of um, the most expensive houses for sale in Vermont. Vermont. So there was this one mansion, and it was like three houses, and they had statues and all this stuff, and Cinnamon and I were going, oh Ooh, my God, this is ah, great, look at that, awesome. how this fabulous, look, they got art pieces everywhere, and Spider comes in, her son and goes, I think that's it's awful, he's like, that's creepy, How could you guys like it? That's just crummy. And then, and then we're going, oh, Spider, you just don't know. Mommy, you don't understand. And, and, and Grandma thinks this is great, right? Well, So if then, you're in, in Vermont, it's the house with the big head overlooking the lake and the Necco wafer chairs. <laughs> so then then we started scrolling through YouTube because it was a slow night last night. And then we're looking <laughs> at ugly houses from 
uh, on Zillow, and this guy had the same house explaining he, he why. He's like, look at it, ugly houses on Zillow. And he also <laughs> does Facebook Marketplace. I love him so much. I, like, want to give him YouTube help. And, yeah, he's so funny. That's I what think it's Stupid sh- Sean or Sean is Stupid. I'm not making fun of him. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, and so he sits there and he trashes this house in the most hubris way. We're going... Oh yeah, that it's is exactly ugly. everything's what spider everything we said. thought everything <laughs> spider said, and we're going. Oh yeah, maybe oh, that yeah. is tacky. I guess maybe, that is unfortunate. Yeah. Had some oh my god, what was I thinking? <laughs> oh my gosh, you had me just thought. You know, and he's we like th- under a thousand subscribers. It just made me feel better about like when my channel isn't doing well. I'm like, if this guy is under a thousand subscribers, that's not fair. He said we watched every video, sir. If you are stupid, Sean, and you see this, <laughs> we watched ev- every like those th- views. That was us. We were laughing for, for about an hour and a half on the floor <laughs> laughing. The guy is, we so thought the funny. guy was so funny just looking at ugly houses and, and his commentary was hysterical. It's just, yeah. And, and then I have to say, I felt a little bad because just minutes before we had been admiring the artwork in this house and all their money. And then he pointed out how awful it was. And then we're thinking, oh. But sir, if, 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 if someone knows you or knows who you are, stupid John or Sean is stupid with the Zillow houses in the marketplace. Here's my YouTube advice for you. I've been doing this for like 10 years. Focus on the rich people. Make fun of the rich people. That that's was the gold. best. That was the, gold. The, tra- the weird stuff on Facebook Marketplace, that's safe, right? Like, that's 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 also gold. Actually, anything Facebook Marketplace is gold because people are so weird there. Like, the comments, all that. Enjoy that. But for the Zillow thing, focus on the rich. Because, I mean, we all, I mean, we honestly, we all like to laugh at the rich a little bit. If you're rich, I'm really sorry. We do just a little bit. And, oh, man, those were my favorite. Unless you want to send us $10 million and then we could be rich. And, and you, you can make laugh. fun of my house. We'll do a clap. <laughs> clap. <laughs> okay, girls, let's get focused one more time. Focus. Uh, Lorraine would like to know, have you ever worked on one painting together just for fun and seeing what comes out of it and taking turns on working on it? For fun? For profit, well, we, for, for, profit. Money. for yeah. profit, we've done it. We, did, you know, we some years ago, back when Simon was in college, we did, there was a whole bunch of stuff that got designed. That, that was way. the studio assistant. I mean, like you know, we Cinnamon, you know, Cinnamon and I have spent more time together in the last six months, and we've been traveling. I'll tell you something, <laughs> uh, than we have in years because. Uh, uh, just, just because life and where we all live. And it's nice that you got to see the grandkids. Yeah. So yeah. They just great. change so fast, man. They're like, here here today, going tomorrow, aren't they? They just grow up. Yeah. Spider's so tall. Yeah, he's a tall one now. He's a tall one. We didn't know it until he cut his hair, and then we were like, oh, my God, you're all neck, kid. <laughs> all right, what else you got, John? I have got, what is the best way to travel with paintbrushes without them being damaged? Don't you guys have that right now? Don't you have your stuff all packed up, ready to go on the trip? You have all your stuff right over there, right there? Yeah, but it's not packed yeah, up it's yet. not packed up. Uh, we put know, them in we, tubes. We just, you know, they just have to stay flat. You can just roll them up in something. We put them in a tube. In a tube, like a... Um, I have got, them in a we tube. We got tubes and stuff we can put them in, like, uh, like that. Yep. Tube. Put them in that. Put, them in tube. put a little cap on them. A little cap on they them. travel with the whole studio. Yeah, and we, we <laughs> travel we, yeah, we travel with the... We, so do I. <laughs> here's my paint tip for traveling. Make a list. We got, oh, we definitely. were taking a trip, like, like last month we took a trip, or like six weeks ago we took this trip, and we had a free cruise, so we went. <laughs> of course <laughs> Why we did. not, right? Because we can cruise cheaper than we can buy groceries here. And... Um, uh, anyway, uh, we were halfway down to Galveston, and John said, "Oh, I forgot to paint the white. I did forgot to pack the white paint." And I'm going, "The white paint. The white paint. The titanium white paint. We don't have because that means that it's over. There's no time. <laughs> it's over. So then we had a quick. You gotta have white. <laughs> we, we had, and then there was some other stuff we forgot to pack as we were got into it. And so now um, we have a list." A list and that gets checked off. Follow there it. you go. Do you guys ever get stopped by TSA for any of your art supplies in the Never. luggage? No. Never. So you don't do it on carry on or do you do it in the luggage? Like everything gets in the luggage. We just check off. We have a whole you check little, it. We yeah, check, we check, we check it. the bags. We have one suitcase that's just all all. Because I think some supplies. of those tubes are over two ounces, so I wonder if it ever flags or they care or not. Not if it's in the not in our shampoo bottle. They don't care if it's in the suitcase. No, it's in the suitcase. They don't care. But you know, here's the they thing. Haven't. I I like um, you know. Um, yeah, we, we're we fine. We just... Um, Basically, the big tubes, we take the titaniums and a couple specialty colors, but other than that, we travel with the Salvador kit. And the, and the whole buying... Um, Babies. Full, uh, you know, luminescent ones and a few others and the, you know, and a bunch of brushes. I feel like I see some Senele acrylic in there. Yeah, it's going Yeah, we have time. some of that, too. Um, Golden. 
Pamela would like to know, will the Royal Purple members get a discount for a cinnamon store? That's a good question. Um, and cinnamon I, probably going to say. As soon as I can <laughs> fix the, if I can, as soon as I work out the coupon it's system. A technical que- it's a technical question. It's a, right so, so emotionally, can I say, I want to be able to set it up where my mom has an affiliate over there and she has coupons that she can give to you guys. And that's a thing that I want. Not I don't yet, know how though. to get it right now, yeah. but I want it. It's a, te- it's a technical thing, you guys. We, hey, we got the store up. She got the store up. That's huge. Just and like, like everybody bought the stuff in the store that she had. To, oh, it just tripped them a, out. They did a, not think that was going to happen at all. Let me tell you, they did not think this plucky duck could. And then, and the other thing that was sort of interesting. Let's just move that away. And just I don't know why list. I'm fiddling. I'm just weird. Yeah. So what I what, <laughs> what I want, well, I just wanted to feature your books a little. I'm bit. just you making her to, crazy. I'm just like fiddling. No, I fiddling, wanted to fiddling. feature the books. Well, they're not time. being shown. Well, you I should. don't know. I touch it. It's a fiddle. No, but I, we could be showing the books a little bit. Flash down to the books a little bit. Let's get a shot of the acrylic April books again. For those that you came in late. This is the new hardback book with all the bright colors. It's so bright. It's so bright and beautiful, and the pages are so thick and, and glossy. And they can be. You'll be. You know, John has to finish uploading the skew or something, and then hopefully know. by the end of the week it should be up. It's already been up sent up. It's already been set up. Yeah, it's, it's set up. Is, it has to it go through. Has to, all of them have, have to be reviewed. The issue with Amazon look, look at that. is like it's not like we've never put the books up here. All, all like it's just they get declined a lot. Yeah. So and then, yeah, and then a you know, lot. They didn't like this or that or the other, right? You know, one of those things, right? Oh my gosh! Like, like yeah, that one there is like I don't know the you know bleed edge you know is off that, or you know, whatever. You know where that page is here in this one? I don't. Let me. It's at the beginning. Yeah. So see, so, you know. So anyway, we just. We, you know, you've got the, they, again, we want to feature that because they did the, for those of you who came in late, Cinnamon's book is out. Technique she, pages, that's how many techniques I teach you, all those techniques. And and she's got um, the um, the first book, which is paper, you know, which paperback, you know, is more, it's not quite newsprint, but it's close, right? So it, you're not going to see as see vibrant the difference colors. In your colors. It's, it's close, though. It's not it's bad. very close. Look at that. Very close. Look at that. So I think that's really nice. And this is the kind of book where you can really scribble and draw. I think this other one is so luxurious and nice that I would be reluctant to underline it. But you can that. see. I, that's why we wanted to do this. So you could. I hate when people don't show you what you're going to get. <laughs> yeah. I oh, yeah. love it from Amazon. I really wish they had sent me samples of what the examples of the different types of printing styles that they had in the cost range and been very upfront with it. If anyone on Amazon is taking notes, that would have been very nice well, for me. To well, I think what service. they want you to do is just order up a book yeah, first. Look, 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 look at that. Because so, then I would have, you know, then I would be so making So you can see decisions. we're very close. So these are just a little shinier and brighter, but you certainly get the idea. And remember, every one of these uh, tutorials, you can see the actual picture, what it looks like on your TV. Mm-hmm. With the video that with matches the, video the steps. That goes with it. So this is really a... And I all of them, 2021. This is the workbook. 2022 and, $20 and 2023. right now on Amazon right now. 20 bucks. Yeah. And and we even... Uh, you can, uh, and... and um, I think we have a link And please someone. leave a review with pictures. Pictures of Acrylic April that you've done. Pictures to let other people know. How, Not how for me. she was. Okay, so like, yes, it does benefit me and the reviews are great for me and all that. But here's what I want you to think about. I want you to think about somebody who doesn't know who we are at all. There's and they don't know that, that they can do it. You're not really talking to me. You're talking to them. And let them Good know... Point. Your experience, your story, your journey, throw up pictures of your paintings. If you feel comfortable to do that, if you don't, just hold a picture of you holding the book up. That's totally fine wherever you're at. But just let them know they can do that. And then put it back down again, John. <laughs> We're going to photo that it's again. It's the cutest That's kitty a, in the world. This is, uh, this is our, our uh, Captain uh, Cook uh, uh, Captain pirate. Cook can you download this lesson? Yep. It will well, when is it when it's released? Coming up, it's coming soon. Hasn't been released yet, but this is part that would be released this summer. But when it's released, summer, yes, then you can to... download it. So if and you did my bunny, if you're my, if you're a sherbet and you did my bunny, look how good this would match. Ooh, yeah. You would have to download that lesson. Yeah, and then uh, also we've got the, um, these are the two new releases. I want you to check our store weekly while we're traveling. They're we'll not, be putting they're, up he's not there. Stuff. He doesn't do quick changes. I'm learning this about John Little. He doesn't go flash, flash. He's no, like, I don't here? do that. Or your face. Yes. But this you're not is, back and forth. No, yeah, so this drives is me our, nuts. Um, this is our, um, <laughs> That's really pretty. This is our Watson. Hi, Watson. Watson, the Scottish like, detective. Like, a, you know, um, Sherlock Holmes and Watson. No, I think we all... Yes, we all knew that. 
Well, maybe not everybody knew it. Everybody but. knew that. <laughs> Did they? Okay. No, I don't, well, know. Yeah, I don't know that everybody knew. I think I'll, I think many people knew that. But you know what? They all know. No matter if they if they if they are you know uh, in, uh, into that, if they're into Sherlock lore and stuff. Whether or not they are or not, they know this is a cute puppy. And we sure they know he's a good boy. And you can find our <laughs> website. We have like seven to fifteen different. The things to get Maybe to our Maybe you website. have this type of dog. Have you ever heard of All Roads Lead to Rome? So Acrylic Painting with Ginger Cook. Now this is PaintingWithGinger.com. Also takes us to our major website. We did give a different one. Just everything. This is really simple. So keep and it, it fits simple. on a t-shirt And then the shirt better. I'm wearing with the Lucky Duck. Okay. Oh, you got to switch back. back. To the... <laughs> Lucky Duck. Lucky Duck. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, not to brag, but I got this cruise for free. Yeah, I've got yeah. a bunch of those. Look at all the t-shirts that we've got out uh, and again, keep checking because, uh, and if you have a particular, if you have a particular t-shirt t- t- design you would like us to feature, maybe some of our artwork or something you'd like to see on a t-shirt, John and I, while we're traveling, uh, you know, have some free time, we will design more t-shirts and we want to hear from you. Wow. Mm. That, that's pretty exciting. That is exciting. See, now yeah. you're fitting in. It's not just me. It's genetic. Genetic. Well, <laughs> all right. So I think... I think I think that we should probably wrap this up. I'm getting hungry. I know you guys. Oh are too. man, I'm hungry. But we'll do this again when uh, maybe when uh, we see. Maybe we'll be over in Ireland sometime and do it together. Who knows? No, if, like yeah, you're totally coming. Like yeah, you're totally. Cork, and that's one of the things we're doing. All right. So well, next time we next time we'll from uh, Ireland. The Irish eyes will be shining on you. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There. So uh... what? <laughs> But we won't do that. That that would be Minnesota. <laughs> we won't do anything for <laughs> art, but we won't do that. <laughs> All right, so I think that concludes this evening show. Thank you, everybody, for coming and attending. Please, as you leave the door, make sure you have hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and if you could leave a comment afterwards and share the video. And if your question did not get answered tonight, leave it in the comments, and perhaps... I'll get cinnamon and me. We might just answer. I'm not going to come answer questions. <laughs> no, but I'll well, ask you why I'm here, and I'll answer for you. Oh, oh okay. Because <laughs> I can just shout out, hey, somebody wrote this. What do you think, cinnamon? And then I'll, I'll tell I, you what yeah, she, she said. Does, she does ask me as I'm going by, but I don't just, like, no. go into my mom's group or no, she YouTube doesn't, channel and be like, ah, ah, ah. No, no, but I'll ask, I'll no, ask no, what she no, thinks. None of that, none of that. Or no, you I'm, can write I'm cinnamon fine. directly and ask her. You know what? Oh, yeah, she's not doing anything. All right. Love you guys. Thanks for watching us. Thanks for subscribing. Bye-bye. And uh, we'll thanks for love, all the fish. And don't forget to uh, watch. Uh, yeah. The, uh, so long and thanks for all the fish. So long and thanks for all the fish, you guys. <laughs> Hugs from the both of us. Bye. Bye.